kicking the flow, don't you know, Bobby Joe? Listen up, sister.
Hello, everyone. Welcome. We have a great night tonight. I'm our cryptic. Who we got here? What tonight, up, Carl? Ricky? How are you Who doing? Do we have me, Carlton. I'm here with you, Ricky. What's going on, dude? Super excited for tonight's match. I'm doing great because you're casting with me, dude. Oh, you. That's the uh, only reason I'm here. If I'm being honest. Dude, who doesn't love Likewise. this guy, honestly? Who doesn't? Thank you. Now, hold the applause. What are we casting tonight? This is a land qualifying match between okay, Stony Brook okay. University, the winners oh, of the Winter Invitational. Guys. They're kind of yeah, well known. Good, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Versus the University of Illinois Chicago, a team that... Ooh. Uh, exactly, right? That is what the response is. I hear every time when I'm like, yo, UIC, and people are like, who are they? I, I've been saying since the start of this tournament, coming into playoffs, going into round or second half of the season, I was like, UIC is the, is the dark horse of this tournament. They're going to land. Dang. I, that, that was my prediction. We'll see if it holds true. And what's going on? Did they compete in the Winter Invitational? Uh, no, I don't think they made it to Winter Invitational. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they didn't make it. <laughs> they didn't make it to the winter rotation. And they just sorry, I, they went wait, this, four and zero. Oh. This, this is the land qualifier match, right? This is the what semifinals of the upper bracket playoffs. Yeah. So this is did you guys get lost? Like, how did they end up here? I don't know. I, like, I'm not sure if like they were just joking around the whole first half of the season, but I covered them second half fall. Yeah. Uh, in or in, in spring, and they were phenomenal every game. Didn't you drop like a single one the whole time. Dang. So, I don't okay. know what they're doing. Well, now they're playing against arguably the best team. In fact, I'll say it, the best team in the league. Yeah. They are the winners of the Winter Invitational 2 owing the current grand champions, the Rochester Institute of Technology. And tonight, uh, to earn their spot to return to LAN, to get another chance at the Collegiate Crown, becoming the grand champions, they are... Who are they playing again, Ricky? Stony... University of Colorado? Uh, yeah. That's what the C stands for, right? What is that? University. I don't know. Who are these guys again? <laughs> University of Illinois at Chicago. We'll be yep. taking University on the of best Illinois in Chicago. Yep. So it's how be good. did? Let me before we get started. Hold on. Very quickly, I'm pulling up the playoffs mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. bracket here. What did these guys do to get here? UIC, two O the Austin Longhorns. They knocked the slithery, slimy, sexy slugs. That's that was the big you remember deal. Remember on Monday when we casted the best series of the playoffs? Yeah, these guys with, beat the with slugs. The slithery, slimy, sexy slugs knocking Rutgers out. Rutgers, who survived four rounds in the lower, survived three rounds, eliminated three teams. In yeah, the lower bracket. Okay, then they took out U of T. They took out U of T. That's my Canadian team. Who are these guys? Yeah. And they 2 0 every single one. They have 2 0 everyone. This team is looking good, man. They are on uh, an upward trajectory, be. some would say. They Well, they're playing the best team in the league, so they better bring their A game tonight. Yeah. This is They've knocked out a lot of teams, Ricky, but this is... This, this is Stony Brook. This is the team. Yeah. We're talking about Stony Brook here. This mm -hmm. is not a team that you can take lightly. No. Well, let's get into it. I want to see what they do. All right. We'll be going into the game one here in just a few moments, everyone. So strap yourselves in. It's going to be an amazing series tonight, so don't go anywhere. It better be. Oh, it's going to be. We know it will be. See you guys in game. All right, everyone, we are back. We have made it. All right. Man. The draft between game number one. Now, a little bit of a odd bug here. It does say SBU has currently one victory against UIC. That is not correct. That is just a, a lobby error. So we'll just lobby error? Who's the host? Tell me who the host is. Disqualify them. I don't know. You know what we should not... You know what we should talk about, though? Uh... That abomination on the radiant side of the map. <laughs> what is that? Probably one of the funniest banners in CSL. 
it's just you uh, it's it is a uh, yep let's be honest ricky that's a masterpiece and everyone knows that the university of illinois is at chicago is a school of fine arts yeah and we were seeing it here this i mean it has to be right with a banner like that you'd have to assume everyone there is is a uh graphics graphic arts type of major exactly um speaking of i know that the players on eternal king frankie uh specifically king frankie himself is a a major in ownage yes yeah i hear dark raider does too dark raider being a dark raider is dark raider still their star player i think he is it doesn't i think pretty much she was she was getting a name for himself though in the amateur scene yeah he he qualified for uh Closed quals for the major. So, like, he didn't, they didn't make it, but he was in closed qualifiers for the major. Dang. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say... Who, uh, who are they playing again? Who are the other guys? Uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, well, they obviously did their um, homework, both teams, which is great of students in a collegiate league. Because, yep. as we can see from the bands in the first phase, these are... I would say, especially uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago, these are targeted bans. These, they're, they're not banning for Dota, what's good in Dota. They're banning for what's good this game. They know what um, SBU wants to play. And a first ban Chaos Knight comes out from them, and I absolutely love that. And haven't we they're seen play right. SBU play Chaos Knight in almost every series? Uh, I, I think we've just seen Chaos U pick run at them heroes and run at them in every series and win. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a couple team. There was two teams in CSL that played Chaos Knight very, I don't, I don't want to say like religiously, but very often. And that would, yes. I think Stony Brook was one of them. And I think ASU mm -hmm. was the other one. ASU was a team that I think played that sounds it right. almost every game in CSL. We saw mid one as well. What was it? We saw a mid Chaos Knight once too. Yeah, it was on ASU that ran the Chaos. Or no, it was Stony Brook that went the Chaos Knight mid. I think when it first came uh, out. Actually, the they did it against SB RIT, didn't they? I don't recall. I think that was RIT. Actually, I'm not sure though. I'm not sure. But yeah, we have seen it. So I, I, it's it's good, like you said, that these teams are doing homework. Also, great great uh practice for actual college Ten at the university. Remaining. But let's be honest, um, Dota here, quite quite a bit more important. This is CSL we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Remaining. I think that was Toronto, by the way. Was it Toronto that did it? Yeah. The Chaos Knight yeah. RIT didn't play ASU. Ooh. So, hold on, quickly. I was just going to mention, SBU's picks actually don't seem... They seem very general. Not to say they haven't done the research. But there's another hero we see in SBU pick. SBU has had their heroes banned and one of their heroes denied, which they often pick in the first phase. To my knowledge, mm -hmm. this is what Life Stealers what they beat RIT with in Winter Invitational Finals. I think you like have to respond time. to the Juggernaut first. Okay, I mean that works too. I was like, I feel feel like first phase you have to respond like a big counter. I would have gone Grimstroke Jug. I think that would have mm -hmm. been probably the best two opening picks. My worry about Morphling like that now. Denies, this denies Viper from them though. That is true. Do, can you first phase Life Stealer Viper though? Uh, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I you feel might. like that's too scary. Those are two really good heroes. Viper has seen in the first phase. Doom, okay. I still do. We'll probably see a Timber Saw ban here coming out soon. That's a... So there's a, there's two cores in the first phase. Yeah. Um, Doom potentially can be a taxi for Life Stealer if he wants to go blink. Yeah. I do like the Morphling pick. He is pretty good um, against both of these heroes. Just like high damage. He doesn't actually get repped apart too bad by Infernal Blade. The big thing is crowd control for Morphling, and neither of these heroes really offer that. At least not yes. with the outside of the Doom spell. Yeah, the entire what is hero is revolved around. Yeah. And named after. <laughs> we get Viper out that's of the good. pool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, he's gone. And I think that's smart. UIC. So can we petition to have Doom renamed to Doombringer? Right. Because that's really what yes. he is. That's like his actual name. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was uh, Blizzard. Yeah, I think that might have been a Blizzard copyright. Dang. Five Who knows? Remaining. So, is Morphling really telling of a strategy? He must. He must not be. He's not necessarily. Be um, he he can play in either safe lane or mid lane, um, and he's really good against several mid laners. the The reason UIC banned Viper here is because uh, SBU has the Morphling, which is like really the only counter. So if they take the Mor the Viper, they could then safe lane the Morphling, and then you have a hero, like two heroes you have a hard time countering. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. Yo, look at uh, we've been seeing a lot of Viper. We've actually that's another great uh, here. That's the one of the other cores that SBU used. Yeah, against Ozon Reiki. uses it a lot, and Dark Raiders played it multiple hero. times. There's a Bane. I like Bane. Infernal Blade also likes him. You have to get on top of him. Uh, yeah. Enigma Band, the Enigma Doom offlane. We've seen that a lot, and we've seen it do very well a lot as well. Yep. So SBU doing their homework here. The Nyx oh my hero! Assassin. Oh man, this hero is so good. So all he has right now is Inkswell that he can guarantee a carapace on off. Mm -hmm. Waveform, I don't know how it works because you're invulnerable during waveform. Do you get hit after? Uh, no, I think it actually consumes the damage tick too. So I don't know if wow. you get stunned. There's a few spells that I'm not sure how that works with like spike carapace and if you're invulnerable. Ten like if Jug spins on you, does that can does it reflect the damage yep. onto a damage immune target so he doesn't get stunned when he comes out? Yeah, exactly. No, he does. He doesn't because he's immune to the magic damage. Yeah. All right, that's a great pick actually. By SBU. Mm -hmm. Now the reason being now, Doom is, is quite... you can take oh, that you can take the razor to any of the three lanes and it's strong. Yeah. Yeah. And three melee heroes. Um but Life Sealer and Doom are pretty quick, but Razor's always Ten also a quick hero. Winning. Now I don't think that Infest gets rid of Static Link. Do you know that? I think if it does if, not. If you can still infest during yeah. during it, yeah. Yeah. Or you can still be static linked when you infest a target. Yeah, I think the only thing that gets rid of static link is ranged. Correct. Nothing purges it. Not and not anything in the game. Not even a disruption or astral. None of it. Nice. All right. Well, UIC did their homework, but they're they're seemingly stumped on the fourth pick. Probably want to pick up their. Oh. Lena. That is a good pick, because now it is it is not a good lane for Razor. Um, like, he doesn't do exceptionally well against Lina, because she can usually just LSA him, so he doesn't get the static link off. But yep, Razor doesn't... It's yes. not a bad lane for Razor, either. Like, I think he'll do fine. The question yeah. is whether or not I mean, SBU want to take this Razor into, like, the off lane to bully out Lifestealer, or if they want to take him in the mid lane. Well, uh, SPU does have last pick. Exactly. So they get a, pick one favorable back. matchup, guaranteed. All right, they ban Silencer, actually. That's an interesting ban. Ah, I guess it's pretty good. Fiend's yeah, grip. I guess it's really good at Fiend's Grip. It's really good against Morphling. Because right now, how do you break Fiend's Grip? Doom has to be on top of uh, Bane, or Lina has to use her LSA on Bane, which she doesn't want to do because she wants to start a combo. Um, and yeah, you have to either use Split Earth and you can't Ten carapace it. Remaining. They need, they do, it seems like UIC would benefit greatly from a way to deal with, uh, a reliable way to deal with Fiend's Grip. Yeah. Also, setting up, like, kills on Morphling with it, just globaling into, like, a Nyx stun, it's, like, right. an easy kill. Mm -hmm. Is there any core, or rather support, jumping out at you? For Illinois, it's kind of hard. Um... You could pick... You need more of a defensive support at this point because you have a Nyx Assassin. Um, heroes that we've been seeing a lot... Uh, I don't know. Um, I was thinking... You could go Jakiro or Wyvern, two flappy boys. I don't know if you wanted... Wyvern into Static Link could be very dangerous. Yeah, but it's just so good against Morphling is the, is why, is the reason I, I uh. like it. I was thinking really Witch Doctor. Too. Witch Doctor could be pretty well, good. Well, the thing about Witch Doctor is Morphling would love to, to morph Witch Doctor, I feel like. Yeah, because it's, it's based on Maledic current someone. HP, not percent HP lost. So you actually, Morphling doesn't take any damage from Maledict. Five seconds remaining. So like, if you, like, say you do like 400 damage off Maledict, if his health actually yeah. goes up, it doesn't accrue any extra damage. Yeah. Which a lot of people don't know that. Very cool. Yeah, Meldic uh, spell gets owned by heals or anything of the sort. Mm -hmm. uh, what other? So, what about a lich? The lich could be good. I feel like you just need something. Or what about disruptor? Static link. Or a static field. Yeah, I think we could see a disruptor. I, the, the, I, I think disruptor or. I don't, you don't really want Jakiro. Jakiro could be good. Disruptor or Wyvern, I feel like, have to be it. Okay. Ooh, there it is. Why? I was like, Wyvern's ult is too good here, I think. 
Yeah, if uh, Morphling goes near Razor, yeah, statically, yeah. Can you I mean, or either of them. The... If you put Razor yeah. or Morphling next to any of the supports, you can kill them. But then the the thing that makes it really nice is uh, it sets up for an easy like multiple LSA, and that's when things get kind of kind of get scary. You also have a Nexus Assassin. They have a lot of follow ups done after the Wyvern ult. Question is, what is UIC pick. or what does SBU go here? So, this mm -hmm. is gonna be. Oh, well. Kunkka. Kunkka, okay. reliable. I really like this. So, this will be the mid Kunkka. We'll take the Razor to the offlane against PK. And we'll have. My... Remelia in the safe lane morph. Oh, the Remelia morph lane. Um, my concern is that if Morphling dies, I think it's very hard for UIC to kill Lifestealer. Yes, um, Lifestealer, well... Because then it relies on grip, static. But... Oh, yes, they, they have ways to get the static off. There's a lot of damage on both of these teams. I think this is going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, I agree. I think both these teams are going to come down to like a couple like big fights, but... For the most part, I think both drafts are really good. I I don't I can't honestly pick a favorite. Um, what about the shoe Grimstroke? Shouldn't that be your favorite? God, I know Grimstroke's just so good. And man. Dark Raider Kunkka, and the Eternal King Razor. I don't care. But we have PK Life Sealer, and PK is a god on this hero. I don't know what team are they playing again. <laughs> <laughs> University of Illinois <laughs> at Chicago, please. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be a crazy good game. I'm really excited. Dark Raider Kunkka, I think he's going to make some ridiculous plays. Well, he has to deal with... See, Nyx Assassin, if if, if Kunkka X's someone, Nyx Assassin just goes and gets hit by the torrent. Yeah, I mean, you can also just uh, spike Carapace the, uh, the Tidebringer as well. Mm -hmm. Nyx yeah. has a lot of spells he can, he, he can counter this game. Like, a ton of spells. Oh. And he has a lot of creepy cosmetics. Yeah, I actually really like that. I don't use that set, but it was Whoa, like one of the cooler looking sets out. back in the day because it was really creepy. Yeah, that's like... Ugh. Just wait till you see it in game because you see him from the top. All right, buddy. Game number one between Stony Brook University. With every single rune unlocked, Grimstroke. Did you tell he's played the hero before? <clears throat> Excited to see what he does. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and introduce my boys at University of Illinois Chicago. Sorry. Team that people have been sleeping on. So here we go. We got PK playing the Life Stealer. We have Sammy playing his Doombringer mid lane. Stop the Madness. Going to be playing Lena. Turtleneck on Nyx Assassin. Going to be a really fun hero this game. And last but not least, Du Boy. Going to be playing the Winter Wyvern. All right, let me tell you about the State University of New York Stony Brook, the winners of the Winter Invitational, RIT Slayers, called by many. Shu, leading this team, support level 10 Grimstroke, close qualifier, qualifier. It's a lot of stuff. Grimstroke. He's done a lot. Grimstroke? Yeah. No Zom is going to be playing Bane. Dark Raider is going to be slaying on Kunkka. You remember him from LAN last year? Oh, who does Razor, the Eternal King himself, and Morphling, Remelia. Only plays green heroes. Fun fact. Yeah, that's, that's why I've been told. Mm -hmm. I like the Scotty cosmetic on his back, too. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm roughly at some new ones. Oh, look at that Nyx, dude. Get out of my game. He's just like, it's like an ant on my screen. <laughs> I just yeah. want to flick it off. He does look like an ant. Oh, it's so realistic. Bottom right. lane might be some action. Does. Top side might be some action. I don't know if they want oh, Bottom they side, we have Frankie with the ink swell, stealing damage from Life Stealer, going on Winter Wyvern with, the, Wyvern with the stolen damage. Nothing's gonna happen. Top side, LSA comes out from a rotation from Lena. Nozom is in trouble. Orfling throwing uh, some auto attacks, trying to beat them back, but the bug is creeping oh. all over him, and Doom stabs him in the back with the biggest sword in the game. That was not a pathing error right there, is what that was. <laughs> he was probably okay. gonna get away and just path backwards for some reason. UIC, first blood. That's a big deal. Oh, Especially going to Doom, because he's going to enjoy some nice farm. Gets a Quelling Blade, has 220 gold. Okay. Um, I just checked mid lane, and we're having LSA hit after LSA hit. UIC, stop the madness. This guy's fiery. 
Kanka versus Lina, both heroes are gonna farm. Both heroes are gonna try and harass each other out quickly. Oh, with the... oh wow, barely closed. A lot of damage on Razor from the Arctic Burn. Yeah, I think. And now they're doing oh. static link ink swell if it connected. Razor, not dangerous. fast enough. Life Stealer has 330 move speed, guys. He just got quite buffed on that. That's actually one of the things that's interesting is Razor doesn't actually match up that well against Life Stealer until uh, Grimstroke has his level two, because uh, he needs he needs Stroke of Fate to get him within range, and then that's how you're gonna pop yeah. the rage. Oh yeah. But so far, top, of, that, quite... top of the last hit chart, Dark Raider. Are we oh, surprised? Yeah. No. There's a, there is quite a bit to the bottom uh, matchup. Um, not so much to the top matchup, you just need uh, someone to walk around a tree a few times and you get first blood. Dude, the boy is just putting in the harass bot lane right now. He's actually trying to be careful here. He's being very aggressive. Every time he puts Arctic Burn on cooldown, Life Stealer baits out Static Link. Yep. Another time it fails. Well, it fails for them to turn into some dam uh, a kill. He does steal the damage. Dude. I really like Shu securing the uh, or dealing with the, the range creep. Can you give me a Upside favor? though, uh, Bane is stunned. Do me a favor, tell me what creep Doom's about to get. Is he getting the Seder? <laughs> oh my god, CSL. Every game, the CSL curse. <laughs> Pick oh Doom, you're gonna god. get a Seder Tormentor in the hard camp, guys. If you want a, if you want a free tip there, that's how you win. Uh, what's it? I think once we haven't seen it out of yeah, probably like think, 12 games now. Yeah. It has like an eight over an eighty percent spawn rate in CSL right now. I think. Right. Ridiculous. Um, twelve and three. Lena's taking the lead mid lane. Regen none. Oh, lane. Okay, got Shoot. Delivered. Getting aggressive. Oh, they finally got the Inkswell Static Storm. They're going to slow the Razor. He's putting damage out on Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern dies, but so falling low. He does. That was the longest range auto there from Frankie. I feel like. <laughs> he threw that thing from downtown. Snipe show. Yeah. Well, we're back. One versus one. Or one one on the scoreboard. Ooh. Mid lane. Lena broken. taking a lot of damage. This is Dark Raider Factor. Top side, Nyx is taking a lot of damage too. Knows I'm chasing him. He has a brain sap. It's only level one though. It's not going to be enough damage. All three of these lanes are pretty contentious Action, right dangerous. now. Mm -hmm. Doom is doing really good though. He's happy. Oh yeah. 16 and That's two. what he does. That is what he does. Chasing down the Morphling. Smacking him up hard. Morphling hates this. He likes to stay at low health and Doom puts tons of damage on him. He's got to be careful too because an Impale from an Assassin can, can set up a, another Infernal and that's with the Hadouken would be enough damage to kill him. Uh, du Bois has been doing... I the Impale connects. Name. Infernal Blade. Hadouken. Offside. Morphling Ooh. getting low but morphing back up. So close. Man, Storm live. comes out, but it's just for CS. Now topside's getting pushed in. Doom's gonna pressure the Morphling a bit. Doom's been doing a great job in this lane. Yeah, he really has. Morphling, you have many of these CS. He does have enough damage. It's not hard for Morphling to last out under tower. Actually, Bane's gonna collect that one. Um, I was going to say, Winter Wyvern has been doing a fantastic job keeping Arctic Burn on cooldown. Uh, yeah, doing it for maximum aggression. Here we go, Inkswell bottom static storm looks very good for um, SBU. Deboy dropping low, losing a lot of damage. Teleportation in from Nyx Assassin will lead to a kill on Grimstroke. Nyx gets the last hit, whereas Razor got the last hit on Winter Wyvern. So, getting a kill, getting a rotation, and we go support or support. I mean, getting the rotation is pretty solid, but the thing is, is like, Doom's... Pretty content taking a solo lane from here on out. And uh, Nyx actually gets one of the runes bottom, so... Yeah. Overall, rotation doesn't Nyx. end up costing him Nozom. Does he get top? He does. Alright, so they yes, go two and two. Or they go three and one, actually, in the favor of Bottom SB lane, here. there's things coming out. Here we go. We got the Splinter Blast. No Arctic Burn, though. Nyx's spells are a great addition to bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Frankie's uh, in trouble here. Oh, here we go. Inkswell. It's gonna pop. There's a double Earth Spike, and now Razor. He's the one forced to run. Not a position Razor finds himself in very often. Yeah, Nyx Assassin with a great rotation just on the back there. Mm -hmm. Double stun, 200% accuracy, baby. Look, he wants to set up another one. 
see. Once the, the creep wave go, goes by, they might splinter blast the Grimstroke. Grimstroke uh, is like really strong in these lanes just because of Inkswell and Stroke of Fate, but unfortunately Razor was not kind of topped off there, so he was pretty susceptible. And they have a lot of magic yep. damage, so he will go down eventually in those types of engagements. He's just um, sucking the damage right out of him. Dude. Plus 80. Woo! Those of you who don't know, Life Stealer will now heal units when he attacks them. <laughs> if only. <laughs> Please. Lina has a Laguna Blade and she has an Arcane Rune Ricky. She might try and make a move bottom or they might run in mid on Kunkka. I'd expect her to go bottom. Kunkka, I don't think you get the kill on with unless Nyx for he's, sure He's on maximum stun. health. Yeah, that is he true. He has the Observer Ward. He doesn't want to risk dying. He knows Lina has Laguna. Yeah, I think Nyx has to hit a, a stun here to kill this this mm -hmm. Kunkka. He's gonna go around. He, they can do it. Mina potentially could uh, he set up his, LSA. Eh, he's just taking a ton of damage from Razor again. 94 that time. Morphling and Doom are keeping even on CS, but I bet you Do Doom's top on net worth. Oh, Morphling yeah. close behind, but that's the Devour. Dark Raider gonna stack his jungle camp, something that he's very familiar with, that we've seen him do before. Getting so aggressive on Grimstroke, I love it. Oh, and actually, there it is. Oh my gosh, they do connect. All right, my bad. I look bottom for like two seconds. I've been sitting in mid lane waiting forever, <laughs> and I look bottom and I'm like, oh, apparently he's dead. <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> you might be uh, in trouble. Yeah, looking at Doom right now, too. Warfling does have ult if he wants to use it. Turns into Doom, pretty far away. They put him to sleep. All right, here's an Infernal Blade War Stomp. No! Oh! Goes too early. Infernal Blade still is an auto attack, so it breaks the, it takes the Mez, the sleep. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Forgetting yeah, that Infernal combo. Blade will actually swap the Nightmare. Missing yeah, no. Tidebringer as well. Anything attached to your auto attack. Okay. Doom buying time, Nyx making move top. He's look at his little skitterer. Skittering around in the jungle with that creepy set. Ooh. Look at this thing. Yeah, he's he's beautiful. Me I don't know what we're talking about. Imagine Razor's walking doing... around on your neck. <laughs> uh, uh, look at his little legs sticking out. Ping's coming out bottom. No, no action though. I was though. say Razor is doing a lot better than he was. Actually getting Arctic burned right now. Ooh, steal some damage. Static Ling. There we go, Splitter Blast. We have an open wound here if we want to use it. Yeah. Not going to go. That's the thing that Frisbee. makes it difficult to go on Razor, right? So that if they do make the the, the try, like he just static links Life Stealer and then all he has is feast for damage. Lena coming yeah. bot the Arcane Rune allowed. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. Lena, do they know? I think they know. They must know. They're backing right She's on it. She's hiding out. in the trees, but I think they got a glimpse of her. I think Shu got a glimpse of her. Uh, yeah. And Kunk has a glimpse of Nyx top, level 8, level 4. Doom went Midas, Ricky, and they can't kill him. I think this is the correct item. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just take a look at Net Worth. Doom top, of course, as expected. Devour giving him that ability. And Put him top to sleep, late, here comes the TPs. Grimstroke. Here we go. Kunk up, boats coming in. There is an, there's an impale, but the damage coming out. Doom dropping low. Salves up for a second, but my boy knows on pure damage from Brain Sap. Takes out the big boy. All right. He just base, though. Kunkka, good score, and right back mid to stop the push of this DD Luna. That was a great rotation, that. honestly. They find the Doom. Yeah, bottom who... side now, we're fighting Razor. Three players on top of him. Winner Wyvern dropping low, but gonna keep himself alive. Frankie has 89 stolen damage. This is stolen from Life Stealer, so he's not part of the fight just yet. Now he's gonna start doing some damage after his friend dies and he enrages. Ooh, there you go. Stop. Infest kill. Back to full. So, He's going minus well. yeah, I was gonna say, if you look at Life Stealer, we got a Midas coming out here. So, if you're UIC, I don't think you mind going late. Shoot, going for top bounty rune. There's a Phantom's Embrace. Doom does not collect the rune. That was close. He should, I, <laughs> that was way too close for me. Right? Uh, rune fight. Looks like Dark Raiders can. Oh, Turtleneck actually coming over here to secure it for his mid laner. That Turtleneck's feels good. doing a good job. That's it. First item boots to travel on Lena. Zoom, zoom, my friend. He is. He is here to move around the map. Uh, what are the first? What's the Doom gonna go for after the Midas? Well, boots, I guess. Drums, maybe. Yeah, treads into drums, I would assume. 
or Vlad's, one of those two. It depends if Lifestealer wants to go the drums, but he'll probably end up going the Radiance build. I think this game now, Radiance would be fine. Is this a shotgun game for Morphling or a carry right clicker game for Morphling? It's a very good question. Probably um, not shotgun against a magic immune carry, I guess. Yeah, it's, Carapace. it's rough, but you, I think you still need the shotgun to take out more uh, like Winter Wyvern. Like Wyvern's probably one of the biggest. Actually, Turtleneck just everyone on so much vision here, top. but they yeah, actually see him with the sentry. Everyone here. They here we go. Now. Phantoms of Race on Lena. She's X. The boat is coming in. Carapace comes out on Kanka. Strip. Make sure you get the kill on the mid player. Very important. Nyx, they're chasing down this bug. They want to stomp them. Doesn't take any damage from Waveform because it's level one. No Zom found him. So did the X. A great pale on two. He's buying a lot of time. Winter Wyvern puts him in cryogenic stasis chamber. He's back out a little bit healthier. Carapace buys him more time. Grimstroke binds the souls of Doom and Winter Wyvern. It looks like Nyx is going to make it away. Are you kidding me? Morphling does not kill him with the cool shot. Uh, X on Wyvern. Doom comes out on the Razor. He's taking power damage. Wyvern's gonna fall. Doom puts an Infernal Blade on Razor, knowing he's gonna die. Great Torn is gonna slow down Life Stealer's attempt to deny the carry to deny him, yeah. bottom lane. And there it is, Nozom again. Great job. Turtleneck like manages to survive and get out of that. What a what a crazy play by him. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for SBU, that um, they found a lot of really good kills there. They force PK to the top lane. And uh, they only lose, I think, the ra the Razor, but he denied, yeah. so it's pretty solid. That was, uh, just, that was a 1,400 gold change. Whew, looking good. No XP earned, either, for um, UIC out of that. Yeah. Ping's coming out bottom. We got Razor, we got Bane, sir. Fiend's Grip, not up for a while. They just want to do Static Link, um, Sleep. Static Link Nightmare is the combo. Yeah, they have a great deep ward here, so you see the TPs in bot, and they have another deep ward in the dire jungle. So they can kind of keep tabs at least on two heroes of uh, SBU, which is really important for them. Because like we said, it seems like they're kind of going this late game or more farm intensive uh, strategy instead of SBU. So they just kind of want to dodge them for the most part right now. Mm -hmm. Midas completed PK, queues up Radiance, so that's what we'd expect. Yep. Drums yep. for Doom. I love it. I would I love like it. to see Nyx Assassin. Alright, he's going Spirit Vessel. You're gonna if you say Meteor Hammer, Ricky, I swear. <laughs> you were gonna say it, weren't you? I would like to see Nyx Assassin get a Yules. But yes, Meteor Hammer would be pretty cool. Oh uh, Topside Fiend's grip, let's go. Grimstroke's here after the rage ends. Inkswell on Morphling standing on top of the life stealer. Comboed perfectly. What a kill. Ivan tries to save him with the um, Winter's Curse, Soulbind Why coming out dodges? after double Phantoms in Gra Embrace. Lena pops oh, the Laguna to pop the Grimstroke. Misses an LSA. Kunkas here with an X. He's going for the Icy Bird. Nyx is not going to be there to Carapace. They have Before eyes on Nyx. Forward. Yeah, they're just kind of pretending he's not there. Uh, Lena actually barely missed the double LSA, and Bane got a beautiful nightmare there to dodge some of that damage. Grimstroke still ends up dying, but it was almost enough to buy him enough time. Poor guy. Yeah, he almost made it out. Kunko went drums and he's going halberd. All right, he had armlet queued up for a while, but I like the drums more. I think um, SBU needs to be active early, and I think that these are what you need to do. Yeah. Uh, Razor going drums as well. Actually, static link, life stealer, life stealer, run. Nope, not gonna be able to make it away. I'd like to see Frankie get a Yules too. You yeah. don't have a lot of like. Uh, I mean, they have a decent amount of stun, but... Doom they... Midas? It, sorry. What was it? Oh, D Doom was driving me mad, but he did use his Midas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I no, couldn't hold back. I, I was just saying, I would like to see him get another Yules, because it, it, they need a little bit more kind of crowd control in these fights, and, like, solo pick-off potential, and Razor doesn't have any, like, pick-off potential. Yeah. They find a boy going for the rune, and he is going to pay for Turtle it. Turtleneck? Yeah, he can carry a pace on the Razor as well, dropping him low. Doesn't have a friend there. Lina's here. Laguna, Laguna, Laguna. Woo! Get downtown. Other side of the map, fighting at the Bounty Ruins. Winter Wyvern drops. Yep. Shoo. Uh, I thought he was position 4, but apparently he is position 6? Or is Bane... Let's check the net worth charts. Oh, he is just slightly ahead of Bane. 
Both having a rough time, but not as rough as Winter Wyvern. Yeah, Winter Wyvern applied for food stamps and then got denied, so he Ouch. doesn't know what to do anymore. The biggest mistake uh, Winter Wyvern is doing this game, I think, is having Go, Col Go Colts in his name. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is, but that sounds really weird. Couldn't be anything good. Bane's taking over the mid lane against the level 10 Doom. Doom are not top net worth, actually. Fourth, Morphling. Wow, farming very quickly. Uh, Romelia, first item Lincoln's on this Morphling. He hates Laguna Blade. Yeah, that's a really good point. Laguna Blade. He also hates Doom. But also, yeah, I was like, you have Doom and you also have Winter Wyvern's Winter's Curse. So there's like three really good spells you need to dodge this game. If, but uh, is there a, a decently long range four second cooldown spell that's, that gets used by a bug who's currently fighting a Razor who's also fighting a, with a Doom and with the Light Stealer and they're stunning him for seven seconds and he's going to die in the trees? Um, you know, now that you mention it, there is. Oh, and yes. is that a good counter to Lincoln's? Pretty good. Oh, speaking of counters Beans to Lincoln's, trip. just kill the Lena before she begins to cast a spell. Ooh, incoming boat. All That's right, so they trade oh, core baby. for core, and this is probably going to turn into a top tower for uh, the yep. side of SBU here. Going for it. They're going for it. I would like to see Stony Brook pick up, like, Lotus Orbs and Lincolns on at least, like, a, a Lincoln Spear on, on three of their cores. I think all three of them should have a Lincoln Spear. You're just to, to block all of the ultimates. And There's too many good yeah. spells that you can block with the Lincolns this game. And it counters their lineup so heavily. Huh? I mean, it's definitely a good item. Yeah, I mean, if you I go Lincoln like... Spheres and then, like, Kunkka gets a Lotus Orb after his uh, Halberd, and you get, like, a Lotus Orb late game on, like, a, a Grimstroke, like, I don't think there's a lot that they can do to deal with it. Because um, their team fights turn into, like, UCI kind of having to wait until that stuff's on cooldown to be able to engage. Yeah. Well, to, at first, to buy items, you need to farm. And if you want to learn to farm, well, don't really keep it a, a, a tab on Doom's Midas. Yep. He did. He got it off again, but, you yep, know, yep. there's Ball always room for improvement. Rotation. Can Nozom get here? I don't know. PK's fine. He's chilling. He's actually almost at his relic. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it is. That's a huge deal. Life Stealer is going to be very dangerous and farming extremely fast. Um, All right, smoke up here by UIC rotating to the mid lane. There's the Yules. Yeah, Soul Bind not connecting Laguna. They're getting the target they want to get. Chunk is going to fall. Boat Sammy's comes out. Dive is not going to stop. He's holding on to his spell. Frankie has a lot of damage. Oh, misses the stomp. Gets hit by. LSA, double LSA, you drops, Winner's uh -oh. Curse comes out. That's friendly <laughs> fire, Lena. Well, Wyvern's gonna pay for that with his life, so I don't know if that was entirely worth it. You do get the buyback on Dark Raider, actually. Um, they, I mean, if you're using that buyback, you have to get an objective here, which means you either need to Roche or get Towers, and they have a pretty bad Roche lineup, so I guess they're going for Towers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, their ability to take objectives is... Uh, Allowing Morphling to go full agility, even then. That's, they're just auto-attacking things. Well, drums helps too. Um, Lena's going to go Shadow Blade, kind of play the solo pickoff. Also keep her out of vision, so she's not uh, starting fights inside Fiend's Grip. Yeah, uh, Doom, Midas. Someone put a... Can we get the time ring add-on for right. Midas's, please? Um, <laughs> he's going, thing, he's uh, running. Yeah, he's just there running straight for a creeper now. Yeah. All right, so they're going to get bot tower with this. Uh, the buyback, not probably the most effective buyback ever, but it's fine. They're going to get the tower push. What's Morphling's item coming out right now? A Yasha? Yeah, that's what I expected. All right. Yep. And then Scotty after that. Smoke There's a smoke up coming out. Any SBU vision? When no. the runes spawn. Arcane rune. Frankie just TP's right into the tower, but doesn't get the deny. Nope. Nick's. Coming around from the side, and there's Arcane Kunkka. He definitely wants to fight. Doom is who they want, not Winter Wyvern, but at least want to get someone. This is really great by UIC here, knowing to back. They saw them take the tower bot, they just disappear off the map. So you have to know they're rotating mid. Yeah. What do you do? You rotate top, and you put pressure on their map there. So this is, this is great. 
Nyx, look at what he's doing. Ooh, found them. God, he's creepy though. He's just he's there. Out. They have no dust yep. though. Zapped by the razor. They're moving in. Unable to find anybody. UIC, they they're disengage. slippery if anything else. I mean, let's just look at net worth here, right? Like, UIC's cores are getting pretty farmed. You have, obviously, first place for Morphling still, but if you're this Lina and Doom and Lifestealer, Doom and Lifestealer are going to get to critical mass here very quickly. Radiance is online. Doom, obviously, mm. just Midas and, and Devour gets his level 15 talent. An extra 220 Ooh. GPM just added right onto your hero. But like, yep. I, I worry that SBU will struggle here if this goes later. Yeah, they, this is uh, fantastic farming coming out from UIC, uh, especially with their item builds. I would like to point out also Doom, perfect Midas that time. There you go. Immediately off, use off cooldown. That's what I like to see. Um, are you still thinking Lotus Orbs for uh, Radiant? I mean for Dire? Or for Dire, rather, yeah. I, I still like Lotus Orb. I feel like it's really good. I think Morphling needs to get... He, he's going damage build, right? Like, I don't think Shotgun yeah, was, right -click. was necessarily bad, but I guess he... I mean, in order to take this late, he has to be able to just out-damage these cores. And I guess with Lifestealer, you can take Rage from him, which is pretty darn good. Because he blocks the uh, Radiance Burn so he doesn't have Miss Chance anymore, which... Yeah. I mean, just having a BKB on your position one is, yeah, pretty good. All right, they actually see this Invis Dark yeah. Raider here, oh. under Ward Sentry. Yeah, they're stalking him. All right, they see the rest what's, of the team behind him. They're backing out. What's what's the better build for late game? Is it Shotgun or is it Right Click? Because of how Ethereal Blade scales, I wouldn't be surprised if... You can still shotgun, pick up a late one. Fall, yeah. Does yeah. it fall off very late? I feel like it stays relevant. Yeah, I think it stays relevant. I was like, you can honestly pick up like a, an E-Blade like, pretty late, but I think he'll probably go for the Radiance. Uh, or not, I'm sorry, Radiance. He'll probably go for the Butterfly. Dark Raiders caught Nyx for a split second. Wasn't yeah. unable to X him up, though. PK not a lot of dust though. being carried around. Ooh, they're pinging Turtle oh, they, they know, they know, they know. There it is. Okay, Carapace uses well. This is perfect for SBU. Gonna connect with the Torrent, connect with the Foe. He's... Dropping low. This Funk is confusing. was actually sleeping. Second X comes out perfect. Oh Once again, gosh, Nick lines nice. them up in a hallway and hits a great double impale. He's buying time. Carapace comes up again, but so does X. Pull him back, torrent him. There you oh, go. Dark Raider with the style points you kill. On the other straight. side, though, they catch turtle. Life they stealer. Catch yeah, PK on the life stealer. And they caught him with his Midas off cooldown. This is. I have all the, the flack we're throwing Doom. This is going to be the worst one yet. This is. They actually oh, almost they guy. like they were pressuring that top tower for quite a while. It ends up costing them the life stealer and they don't get it. That's a pretty big deal. This is the SBU factor. Oh, Razor Atos. What do you think? I like it actually. I was it's similar to the Yule's idea. Yeah. Yeah. Lena, just Lena breaks the Shadow Blade. She's gonna react. She knows there's probably danger lurking, and there is a morphling. Having Yule's defensively is probably a better option than harassing Frankie, because I don't think she gets that kill even with Laguna. Not quite. Double damage spawned. Is double damage a way for Dire to take Roshan? Dire needs some sort of armor break. They they have like a very pretty they have like a pretty crappy Rosh lineup. I mean, all you can really hope is for Kunkka to just tank it and then uh, Morphling and Razor to just try and put as much damage into it as possible. But Razor's damage all comes from his abilities, and then you just have to full like agility morph. But it's not the fastest Rosh in the world. Nope. UIC well, we is pretty bad too. The only thing they have is large. Doom's right. here. Has so, his spell. Amazon. They found a Bane. Is this what they want? There is a sentry. They know their sentry's here. Life is going to immediately rage. Great impale. That was a well communicated gank. Yeah, that was nice. They drop a ward actually right under this. Ooh, it's not in sentry range. Close. But in the meantime, SP is pressured onto their bottom uh, map. Posturing Moons for bounties. Are up. Yeah, two for two. They're, they're okay with it. Bounty. We're slowing down a bit, but UIC likes to slow down with how they're building. Yeah, Radiance, I mean, this Midas game is life stealer. incredibly close. 25 minutes in, the net largest net worth lead was just over 4,000 experience, uh, almost even right now. So this game is incredibly close. Mm -hmm. 2k. Uh, now, Morphling's putting some pressure on a T2, and he's putting a lot of pressure on it. 209 auto attack damage. Yeah, and he's, the Lincoln's allows Doom's him to coming. 
just getting sniped, which is oh, really good. Oh, Morphling has backup, Ricky. Yeah, but in comes this uh -oh, Invis Lina. So here Ooh. comes the Lina. They pop up with the Soulbind's Tentry Ward. They need Inkswell a back. Inkswell on Lina, not going to do anything. Poured in from Lifestealer. LSA missing. There's double Lina. Double damage on Kunkka, too. He gets doomed, doom. but the bolts already came out. Will not connect. Razor stunned up, but on the backside, Nick stunned up. Nick will die first. Winner's Curse coming out, stopping the output from the Radiant team. Winner's Curse not leading to anything. Razor making it away. Every hero's safe here. Doom goes in on the Morphling, the beautiful Lina Morphling. Doom gets X back. Now he's surrounded by SBU. Lifesteal tries to go in. Beans grip on Lifesteal. The positioning from Dyer is great, but the damage isn't there. They finally managed to take out the Doom. Who's next? They do connect an X onto Lina. She's invisible. Plasma Field doing a lot of damage, but they don't have the vision to see her. They'll put the Wyvern to sleep. More bling will deal with her on the oh back side. Oh my gosh, from Amelia. He's playing like a monster. Frankie, Frankie, if he took one more attack, would have died to the tower there. I can't even, I can't stress enough. Vermilia stealing the Lina there set up like three, got like three extra kills because of LSA. Turns oh, yeah. fights completely. Like that was inc incredibly well played. I didn't realize he also Remelia gets dominate every game. He gets the passive from Fiery Soul, by the way. Oh my God! Pretty so that good. Is a great target. <laughs> Pretty good. I hadn't realized that. I I don't play Morphling a lot, but throwing out a couple spells every few seconds, just getting Fiery Soul stacks. Oh. Like Winter Wyvern might ta tank a smoke here, Ricky. Yeah. Winter Wyvern's about to tank a smoke here, Ricky. Axe comes out, silence immediately. There's the boat. Very short cooldown. Winter Wyvern will drop Lifesteal on the backside, finds Bane, who's going to TP out. Uh, Yules on Grimstroke does not connect with the LSA, but does connect with the Laguna. That's you. Done. All right. I trade one for one on the supports. That's fine. Mid lane. Uh, Remelia, he's going to be fine. Gets a Scotty completed. He is now so much tankier than before. Remelia sees next. Remelia sees next. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh so oh. close. He's stuck he gets forever. The Lincoln's Fear popped. Now we have Doom coming in. Doom does not have his namesake. He does have a Midas that's off cooldown. Oh my god. Still has a Midas that's off cooldown. One of the Poor things guy. that's uh, kind of a double edged sword uh, for Nyx Assassin versus Morphling is sometimes you want to be able to pop his Lincolns, and because your stun like ignores Lincolns, you can't. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you. Like, you'll always hit your stun, but that means he'll always have his Lincolns up if you don't mana burn him. Yeah. It's a, I, a yeah, it's a, it's a very cool Dota mechanic. All right, top lane, Lozom has an Invis Rune, wants to actually find a scan there on PK, and they do have Fiend's Grip available, so this could be a potential kill if they can get it. Turtleneck's been playing really well. I love that he rushed yeah. the vessel. Very good this game. That's to deal with the um, the morphling. morphling. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Rex no Zom, Invis, Nyx, Invis on top of each other. No sentry to be found. Razor, Razor on the so side scared. is found by Lina oh, being no. stalked in the jungle. He knows someone's there. Plaza Field, Yule's going to set it up. Lina's not going to miss this LSA. He gets the courier too. Turtleneck and snipes Nyx. it. A vendetta on the courier. That was a full BKB on courier. This is not looking good for SVU. What's the objective? Tower or Roshan? Or do you just I mean, you can Roche that? now. Morphling does enough damage to where you can. The problem is there's a there's a great ward actually here from UIC in the top river that watches the Roche entrance from Dire Side. Um, so they and the only way they get in is by smoking it. And mm -hmm. right now, I think UIC has the map pressure. UIC's, uh, yeah, they just deordered too, the high ground by Roche. Shoot, on the other side of the map though. Now he's dewarding and he gets an observer. That's always, it feels good. The Dark Raider also queuing up BKB. Remelia's next item gonna be the butterfly. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. Nice. Remelia is so far. He has been playing so well this game. Yep. Doing a fantastic job out farming life at 2k. Is being used. Where were they? All right, looks like we're gonna see a Lincoln's on life stealers. His next item. I'm okay with that actually. It's kind of interesting. We have the BKB finished on Lena, also going for a Lincoln's. So they just want to stop Fiend's Grip, right? Like, yeah. how many single targetable spells are there? There's Adaptive Strike, Fiend's Grip, X, like all these spells that you kind of need to stop. Mm -hmm. Static link. 
pretty pretty big one. Takes Razor out of the fight for a long time. Yeah. Dark Vader again has a double damage dude, and he's going for the Daedalus. That's what I want to see. That's yeah. the fun he item. He needs to transition to a carry. He does not do enough damage now in these fights. His boat, very good early, but kind of falls off until he gets damaged. So we'll see. I love Doom's build this game. Gets a BKB complete as well. These teams are just stocking up on these yeah. teams. What do you items. think about Doom's uh, creep choice? Uh, not my favorite. Nope. Not the mana favorite. burn's not doing it. No. A uh, ton of farm. Oh my god, for Radiant on the side. Pop lane. Doom's gonna oh. make his way. Boy, where'd all those come from? Use your Midas Doom. There you go. There we Devour go. The other. Yes. Oh, yes. That's what, that's what I like to see. Blink Dagger next. So he that gives Doom the option to be a taxi and allows him to get unimportant targets. He gets all of them. Sammy, what a player. Can we get some, like... Just appreciation for that. There you go, the claps. Thank you. Alright, Frankie is starting to fall off a little bit in farm here, and this is what we talked about with Ra or with uh, Lifestealer Doom. They kind of just accelerate much faster, and uh, I worry yep. that Frankie will become more of an on-fact they actually get the tower bot. Two catapults, too strong. There we go. Well, Lifesteer is doing a good job farming. He has uh, Manta style, so you can use that to farm too if you want. Yeah, I was gonna be like, what is this random uh, uh, ultimate orb? But then I realized he's got a he's going Manta and then into Butterfly, which I'm actually okay with. I like it. Um, wild, pretty wild. Having a uh, raw stats on morphing this game is really important because it allows you to still be mostly agil like agility morphed. But you're not worried about getting one shotted from a Lena, like out of a Shadow Blade, you know? Yeah. Do you think Lena would ever go Aghanims? No, she's going Daedalus. I love uh, that. Daedalus, yeah, she needs to just be doing damage too. Bot lane, do they find. Uh, they get him. Oh, just two Dang spell connects on Winter Wyvern. Yeah, they do find him. Seven Spirit Vessel charges on Nyx. Is he really? Wow. That was a lot. Teleports come out. Romelia playing up. Lifestealer's there. Midas is in the face. Three cores from UIC have responded to the push bottom lane. The Lincoln Sphere has been used. Okay. Waiting for a creep wave. SPU making a move for the high ground. All right. Romelia has stolen the Lifestealer. Nyx pops Vendetta. Can they make a play? They've got two sentries right outside the base. I hear an X. Dark Raider going back to base. Yeah. Just gonna de-push top lane and be right back. Uh, they actually know he's here. So, yeah. ooh, Sammy okay. jumps right on top of him. Yeah, so we have a sleeping Nyx. Lifesteal uses Rage and finds Bane. So does Laguna Blade. Doom comes out on Grimstroke of all the heroes. Static Link on Lifestealer. Atos to steal more damage. Razor steals 100 damage. Grimstroke dies on the back line. They want to try and go on the Doom. Actually, we see Lifestealer get caught out, or rather Morphling, who is Lifestealer, caught out of the bottom, surrounded by four heroes. They take him out of the game. Back in the mid lane in the river, Doom's retreating, but they don't have enough damage to take down this guy. 2,700 health. He blinks right back in. Looking for someone. Atos buying Yules. time. Yules buy back back. Comfort in. LSA misses. Razor pops the shrine. Now we have the soul bind. BKB popped on Lina. She wants to put more damage on the Morphling slash Lifestealer, but she's the one getting damage put on her instead. Morph, Lifesteal loses the soul bind target. Oh, oh back where did that hero go? Again. More, Wyvern wants to make it out. She gets it's rooted. Lifesteal gets torrented. There's a static link into the cold embrace. Razor absolutely loves that. They're going to clean up the support on the left. But the big target is the Lifestealer on the right. Winner Wyvern falls. Lifestealer actually very quickly looks he like he's going to make away. There is mana for an X. More oh. fling clicks in. Oh, they so have close. a taxi. It almost a slick escape. Actually, it looks like it might be a slick escape. Nyx will trade his life. Wow, Great keeping fantastic. PK alive. Save the president. That was uh, that was the ultimate secret service right there. That seriously was. As far as that fight though, triple buyback for the side of the SBU. They lose 2,000 gold in yeah. that fight. 3,500 total swing. Yeah. So they are going straight to Roche. They actually know that they have to do this. They need the buy yeah. like buybacks expended on Morphling. He has to get Aegis. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of money spent. 11k lead now, Ricky. It has been a very small uh, difference in net worth. 
earlier on, but UIC taking a lead over the Winter Invitational Champions. Kunkka has not made too much progress on his Daedalus, whereas Lina's holding on the baby version. Crystalis or Crystalis? What do you like? Uh, I think it's pronounced Crystalis, but I like about... Crystalis because it's got more flair on it, more style. You Crystal know? And you can roll the arc. Crystalis. Ah, there you go. Yeah. All right. Game in a very difficult position now for Stony Brook as they... <sighs> They do have the Aegis, right? But you did just expend three buybacks. If you lose a fight right now, UIC can take your base very quickly with this Lina. Like, she just shreds buildings. Doing a good job. Almost no meter hammer on next, too. though. That would help them push. It would, but the four staff, I, I like it. I really do like the four yeah. staff. The, the spirit vessel is absolutely core this game. SBU is trying to make a move, but they're not going to find anything. Yeah, they're smoked up. They're actually getting Radiance burned from these illusions. So Winter Wyvern. Keeping tabs on them. Except Winter's the Curse is this game has been so good. There's the pop. They might scout these wards out because they know the smoke has been popped. Vayne. Oh, everyone's smoke. Goes down. UIC knows something's fishy. In the meantime, split push coming out from Life Stealer. Morphling shows his watery face. This is He's not absolutely scared of the correct anything. decision from Illinois here. Or, yeah, Illinois. Mm -hmm. They need to be split pushing this map, forcing Stony Brook back. Because if you, if you lose a fight at your base right now, both teams are not in a good position because you lose your base very quickly. So you kind of yeah. have to buy back if you're Illinois and you lose like Life Stealer or if you lose like your Alina on your doorsteps. Yeah. I would have liked to see uh, UIC try and make uh, SPU commit to a fight there. Yeah, and I think they just want to wait for the, the Aegis to expire. Yeah, they difficult to fight into. Two Morphlings is difficult for them to deal with. We saw last fight what the buyback of Morphling did. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very difficult to kill him once if he buys back or has an Aegis. Um, and he's also almost level 25. What's he going? On Morphling? Yeah. Waveform charges, right? Because he has waveform, uh, waveform charges, attacks yeah. targets. Probably waveform charges. Speaking of 25, look at this uh, life stealer. Very, very close, close to 25. Well. Gonna get that plus and two rage it? duration. So yeah. Razor got his plus 10 armor at level 20, so that's gonna keep him while alive much longer in these fights. And goodbye, your top tier two. Bottom lane, though, Lena doing the same thing. Yep. She's gonna go back. She has an invisibility rune, but it's hard because Sentry's already down. All right, double damage again on Kunkka. Off Lincoln's with mana burn. Pulled back by an X. Carapace slows Razor. Static Link not used yet. Soulbind comes out. Winter Wyvern and Life Stealer holding Winter this Wyvern down and sucking her damage out. Double Fiend's Grip coming out, but Life Stealer doesn't look to be in that much danger. SPU's pushing up to the high ground. Morphling leading the charge. Loses his Rage, loses his Lincolns, loses BKB on Razor. SBU unable to really claim anything in that fight. Uh, I mean, they forced the buyback on Wyvern, but now you need to be really careful if you're SBU because Winter's uh, Curse is still available. Your BKBs are expended, and if you lose this fight here, it's not looking good. No boat, no soulbind, no fiend script, no nothing. Life Stealer. They're trying to get the tower. They might back after the tower. Going on Morphling, Static Link comes out, forces his Life Stealer back. On okay. the side, Winter Wyvern. Wyvern's looking for a great Winner's Curse, unable to find it before Arctic Burn fades. Tier three. And he really wants the tower. They get there it. There it goes. They're, they're comfortable with that. They, they open up shrines. This is a big deal for them. They played this really well. This fight was exceptional for Stony Brook. This is Morphling, right? He just gets that right click. He has 350 damage. Tons of armor, able to just push through the side of uh, University of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And he UIC looked very there. good there, but I think part of that was over aggression from SBU. So, in if we find this scenario again with SBU pushing, Sammy and Razor going toe to toe here, but Razor might be the one getting caught out. out. Very tanky. Now Lena might be in trouble. She's going to TP out. Morphling might be able to drop the her. Morphling does duration. drop her. Turns into Life Stealer Rage Battle. No way to pop this. Nope. Yeah, there's your bonus Rage Duration. He actually lives there because of the bonus Rage Duration. Yep. 
but they find Lena. Her TP took forever to get her Chasing back to base. Winter Wyvern right now. Wyvern's flying away. Him. Great play. No, I'm not going to see him. Okay. Maybe chase someone. Um, I was saying earlier, though, that SVU's loss or lack of racks, but still being able to take the T3, I think was because of mistakes they made, which in the future, if they don't make those mistakes, their push will go much better. Yep. Aegis that has been consumed a lot now. for nothing. So yes, they want. They are weaker than they were before. Yeah, they, they don't, don't want to force the buyback buy here, though. But oh I think they gosh. just really want to use Rage on uh, Morphling. Morphling eats a Doom after that buyback on Lina. Boat is coming out, although I don't know if it's going to connect on anyone. And we're seeing SBU get repelled here. First Grimstroke dies. Razor is in no position to fight. Morphling dies on the backside. The man whose face he stole steals his life. Kunkka BKB TP. Uh, and a sleep on Winter Wyvern, so he can't Winter's Curse and kill him there. Fantastic. I mean, that's just a great play by Doom. Now I know why he stole Mana Burn. Yeah, to break the, uh, the, Lincolns. Break the Lincolns. It's an immediate Lincolns purge. Um, so yeah, he he just gets right on top of Morphling, burns the Doom, and Morphling's useless now. Like, he can't actually sustain through the fight. He has a, a life stealer just standing on him, running after him the whole time. It's a big yep. deal. Morphling down for 90 seconds now. Uh oh. Well, we're gonna see Dark Vader still holding on to the double damage, defending his top side. TP in from Doom. Life still goes right in, similar to what SVU did with Rage. This time, UIC is gonna take Rage and get a kill and support. Although it does lead to Life Stealer having a lot of his damage stolen, he will avoid the X with Infest. Buy back on Shu. LSA will miss. Doom pulled back though on the high ground. He's in trouble. Double Fiend's grip. On the low ground, the double Fiend's grip with the Soul Bind. Shu going oh, in. Oh no. First on the top Bane. side will lead to Bane dying. That's a buyback. Warfling. Has returned as well. Doom's gonna die. Life Stealer though, with his friend fallen, he knows it's time to retreat as well. Warfling pursues. We have an X on Lina. Torrent will miss. Life Stealer getting healed up. Nyx getting deleted from the game. Same with Winter Wyvern. But again, Life Stealer might make it away. The supports trade for their life for the president once you once. Yeah, he will survive here. Yeah. Rage TP is enough. Nyx it out. He had adaptive strike. He just didn't realize he was right there. Uh, he had raged anyway. It didn't matter. Both of these teams are playing so well. Like they're they're they know how much to expend to defend their base and how important it is to defend your base in this game because getting a Rax lead is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then just go right back down the mid lane. Unfortunately, yep. Razor is not here with them, <laughs> but Lena's buyback, I believe, is on cooldown. Yep, you are correct. So and Winter Wyvern. So if you can kit one of them, this is a big deal. Lena actually gets Kunga, double LSA. Oh, got his Daedalus. Great LSA. X on Lena. She has Yules. Just takes the Torn. Life Stealer goes in with his Orchid, by the way, the Life Stealer has. Yeah, he's going to go the Doom build, build Orchid into Nullifier. I love it. Razor's made an appearance. Lena misses LSA. We're going up to the high ground. Atos on Life Stealer breaks it with Manta. Second tier 3 tower goes down, and second retreat from SVU. Nyx. Uh, BKB used BKB on Razor. He was going to miss the stun anyway, so that's very good. He's going to back now. All right, great great decision to make in there, but got to be careful. Life Stealer's DK's slow. Going in. They go for the open wounds. Glimmer Cape buying him time, but he knows where he is. He's getting hit. Doom on the backside. Great play. Goes for Grimstroke, knowing the Razor's likely going to die. Soulbind on Doom, but no one's there. This is a great solo play from Doom coming out, expending his ult, and he's actually just going to get the solo kill. Fantastic play by Doom. That's a dieback on Grimstroke. He's dead for six, like, he's no buyback for six minutes, still still dead for 70 more seconds, and Roche not going to be up for 30 more seconds, so pretty solid. Again, these base defenses are just working, and they've gotten two tier three towers now, but still no racks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job on the defense, protecting the racks. UIC happy to just control the map, knowing Roshan could be up any time now. Yeah, they want to see here. Is this and... perfect? Lena, a little perfect oh miss. Oh my gosh, that is the perfect miss. Poor girl. Well, uh, they're going to get runes instead. All four go into UIC. That feels pretty good. Kunkka pops an invis rune. He should be fine here. Next scout, what's it? He sees it, and they actually scan on the side of, of Illinois, so... They catch the someone in there for a moment, but they know they've left. Yeah. Kunkka queuing up an AC. I actually really like this. 
goes for the Hyperstone first, actually, instead of, like, a Plate Mail, which is kind of bizarre to me. And Roshan now under Siege. Nullifier finished. Yep. DK is not caring about buyback at this point. Okay, you're next. I hear a Rage. I hear a Carapace, a Torrent, a Force Staff out. The bug what is a distraction. Phantom Embrace, the Morphling. Giving his life for Life Sealer is good. That's so She's worth it. on Lina. Grimstroke wants to go in, finds a regen rune, but they wanted the Aegis. Yeah, that's like a great distraction there from the side, of, or from Turtleneck. Just giving his life to secure himself Aegis and Cheese for his team. It's a huge deal. Mm hmm. Very big. And Nyx has done that three times now for Life Stealer. Mm hmm. The other thing is, is we talked about it, like, right? Life Stealer doesn't have buyback. He all ins for the Nullifier, which now is fine because you have Aegis. You can farm your buyback in that time frame. No, no problem. Um, yeah. So it, it's a kind of high risk, high reward play. If they lose the fight there at Roche, he dies. You now have no buyback on your life stealer. You give Aegis cheese to that team, and then SBU can go and do a lot with that. So ends up working out this time. Yep. Uh, Razor going Shiva's is something I like a lot. I think is that Sheepsick he's queuing up next? I believe so. Yep. Another great item. He's the utility Razor. He does rely heavily on Static Link going for a decent duration, and Nyx's Force Staff is a great counter to that spell. Yep. Yeah. Alright, he's going to finish up the Bloodthorn on the side of Life Stealer, looks like. Let's see what Lina's going here. The MKB, I love it. Just more and more damage, really. Smoke up for you, I see. They're ready to move out and fest into the Invis bug. This is a big timing for them. Doom actually level 24, so he doesn't actually have his uh, Infernal Blade damage, but... He's fine. He doesn't care. Uh, is is Life Stealer or Lina a better target for Morphling? Do you think? I think Life Stealer, just because you need the rage. It, it's just so critical critical that he doesn't get stunned up and stuff. Shoo, Mike yeah. it found here. Turtleneck sees him. The infest. Life he goes into right away. I heard a BKB from Razor. Razor BKBs and Static Storms to no avail. Morphling slowing down Life Stealer. BK Life Stealer trying to get the Doom off, but Doom gets the Doom off actually. Soulbind connecting on two cores. Same with Phantoms and Brace on the backside. Winter Wyvern goes in, putting damage on the support, trading her life for it. Boat not going to connect. Nozong almost dies there. Second right. boat not going to connect. We have Ghost Ship Fleet this Third game. Boat Heck not yes. going to connect. Right, Life Sealer open wounds more. on Nyx. Nyx is going to force staff. Peace. Going for it with the waveform. He does have waveform charges. Yes, he does. Atos broken by Manta. Dark Raider wants to get an X. Rage TP. They need the damage. Doesn't get him. away. Doom still actually just going to split push top lane. He's actually queuing up a, a Scythe of Ice himself, which. Um, I agree. I think this game, both teams just need more control. Yeah. Uh, the rage duration. Fantastic, this game. Pretty much fantastic every game, but especially yeah, this it's game. It's so good. And then he's going the double Doom build. I like it. Or a Doom build in addition to the Doom. Alina actually denies an Invis rune because she sees the side of, Sto of uh, Stony Brook run into it. Still holding on to that delicious cheese. Life Sealer still holding on to that hardy Aegis. Oh yeah. Razor almost level 25. Has a gem actually now. What do you think you go? The 100 attack speed or the unstable current damage? Um. This build, unstable current damage. I'd agree. I'd agree you probably go unstable current damage. 200 extra damage seems like quite a bit. Actually, but oh, he, he you need right click yeah. in this game to deal with this life stealer. That's the next question. Yeah, that's that damage is not happening. Um, that's a huge increase though. Yeah, life stealer. We'll see how life stealer how they deal with him. Fiend's grip is great against him, but there's so many ways for UIC to play around it now as um, items and yeah we have a hex on doom completed they actually infest him right now top rune buybacks available on almost all of uic the doom just needs 90 gold which he'll get after that devour but um and kunkka going fleet he's also not really right clicking although he does have daedalus he's going for a divine actually queued up is his last yeah, item. I, love it. I love it i love it all right frankie the blink initiation from du Boy, but they blow it on the Morphling Illusion. Great micro there by Morphling. Bane, soon to be 20.
Grimstroke even sooner to be 20. Grimstroke's level 20 okay. is huge. There we go, Shiva's Inkswell, Fiend's Grip, BKB's on Doom and on Lina. Soulbind connecting the Life Stealer to the Lina. Razor's BKB soon to go down. Warpling goes in, they're gonna kill the Lina very quickly. No, Cheese keeps her alive. Go ship number one, go ship number two. The fleet is not doing very well today. Just expired. Warpling goes deep. They have an X on Lina outside her base. Great cold embrace. CCing four and killing one. Life Stealer starting the turn. They put the, the fake Doom onto Kunkka. They're beating him down, but Life Stealer oh does a lot of damage. Jumps inside the Doom. They've had trouble killing this guy in the past. Razor's CC'd at the bottom. Doom looks like they're finally going to get him, but no. Oh no, they get Warfling with the Laguna Doom combination. Doom not dying just yet. Or we're going to see Kunkka go down. Follow that up with the Razor. No Zom's the only one left. Life Stealer has TP'd out in his face a hundred times, and it's his turn. Time turn to return the favor. This is the only survivor. a huge fight for Illinois. Ricky, it, it seems if you want to beat Illinois, you should not fight them near their high ground or their base or anything like that because every time SBU do, they lose. I mean, the the MVP of that fight is probably Dubois. Got an absolutely monstrous Winter's Curse. Kills off, uh, kills off one, the Bane, right? Grimstroke. Or Grimstroke immediately. Yep. And it catches all three cores. And which it just, just sets, sets up for such up a great run right in. Yeah, sets up such a great fight. And Life Stealer almost dies like three different times in that fight, manages to live. And there we go. Return T3 kill. Are they gonna back or are they gonna go for more? Two cores still down. They want the force to buy back. They're not gonna back. This could be the first Rax we see. This is the first time SBU's lost a Rax in a long time. I think they're just gonna let it go. Smack, smack. A toes break with Manta. Soulbind connects on Lina and the Winter Wyvern. Fiend's Life is available. Gunning it. Double Fiend's Rip comes out. Warfling, Razor, Inkswell, BKB. Everything's being expanded from SPU. They haven't got a kill yet. They're gonna exterminate oh the Lina and crush the bug. Lord. UIC on the retreat, but everyone still has BKB available. The same cannot be said for the U State University Giant of Stony Brook. That was an absolute. Slaughter. Double damage again. They lose the melee racks, right? But we're at a point now in the game where a melee racks actually doesn't matter. Like 20 minutes ago, huge deal. But now, 52 minutes, both these teams can push very easily. Buybacks are just Support being thrown left and right. They don't want Lena to have to use hers. It's a big deal that she doesn't. Uh, three buybacks were expended there from Stony Brook. They're, Kug has a double damage. I think there's no way they get out of this. With the, You either lose a racks or buyback on Lena. I think you, you can't get both. This, we'll this. See how the fight starts, though. There's the taxi. Doom. Doom goes right in. Winter's Curse. They immediately kill Grimstroke. Follow that up with the bomb. They doom the Morphling. Okay, Lina buys back anyway. She wants to be part of the fun because Dark Raider, you're next. Another one game. down. Ricky, is this. That's game Deja over. Vu? Is this. We were just here. My camera's in the same spot and we just watched the same thing happen. <laughs> Watching the boy take three boats in the face is pretty funny, I'll be honest. But, uh. Yeah. I don't. This is the second time in a row. Du Dubois just played that super aggressive. He just blinks forward into their team without vision. Winters curses immediately on the support. Gets gets Shu again. Yeah. And then it just sets up for two easy kills. They immediately set up for a Doom on the Morphling, which not a real Doom. We're talking about the fake Doom. So, yeah, the fake Doom. They still have real Doom up. And look, they're going to tier four. They want to see what the buyback status is. And it looks like nothing's coming to stop they them. They used him in the last Soul defense. coming out. BKB, Ink Swell on the side. Doom gets Doom the Doom on Razor. On the same. Razor looks like he's going to fall. I don't know what his BKB, his buyback status, I'll tell you right now, it does not exist. GG, GG is called by oh a shoe. Oh my gosh. Ricky, we just saw you. Who was it again? University of Illinois, Chicago. The first team, I believe, since, since fall, to take even a single game off of Stony Brook. You know what the only other team to take a game off SBU is? Please tell me. I'd love to know. The grand champions of the Rochester Institute of Technology. Yeah. I mean, this is... They're good, man. This is, an inc this is a crazy good first game. I'm really excited for game number two, but it... University of Illinois, their draft allowed them to just continuously scale. No matter, like, it didn't seem like there was really a point in the game where they were worried about their, their farm or state or anything. They did throw... They a, it very disciplined. Yeah, I will say they did take a couple, like, kind of weird high ground pushes. But the thing is, is when they were taking their pushes, they were doing it when Stony Brook would have to buy back and U University of Illinois would have their still available. So they can always yeah. defend. So they, they yes. were playing very, like very strategic with when they wanted to push, playing around Roche timings and everything. It was just great game by both teams, but game one goes to University of Illinois.
Yeah, the the buybacks played a huge role in that going down. You saw as soon as Razor drops, you just called GG. There's no way. Like, yep. technically they were still in, but they know with no buyback, they're not coming back. Yeah, I, I mean, think yeah. that Stony Brook might have got caught off guard in the draft. Um, you mentioned how good of a, how uh, good of a job UIC did in the draft. I think Stony Brook might have got caught off guard, and we're going to see a better draft from them. And I think Stony Brook also made quite a few mistakes on the high ground push. Uh, multiple times they got very aggressive, popping BKBs, doing nothing with the BKB, and then continuing to fight. Um, I don't think they're going to make the same mistakes in game two as this. the winner of this match will go to LAN. And Stony Brook would love to return to LAN and have another shot at winning the championship. They only only placed third, fourth last year. Only third or fourth. That's, you know, mm -hmm. they're here for a uh, first second. Really first. Well, but they want to place better. Oh, yeah. All well, right. Should we go to a break before we get into the second I, bloodbath? You know, I guess we'll go to a small break uh, in case y'all haven't, you know, moved in the last hour uh, like we haven't. So don't go anywhere. We'll see y'all in just a few minutes. See you guys soon.
Hello, everyone. We're back. Hello. Carlo, how you feeling? Uh, I'm ready for some uh, SBU Smackdown. Yeah, ready for SBU to retaliate after game number one? Yeah, these guys are real good. And I think that that woke them up. And um, it, a team like SBU, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna bring this back. I... They're going for the same bands again, and this is actually kind of stressing me out. They actually but banned their life stealer, say... actually, by the way. UIC. Mm -hmm. they, they, yeah, they know they either have to take it or ban it. First pick this time being for SBU. But SBU is going to take this to three games. They, they beat the R I, they beat RIT 2-0. I think maybe they underestimated UIC in game one. Um, I'm not sure if UIC has an Oracle player. Yeah, there we go. Nick's banned, rightfully so. Great hero to get rid of. That hero... Did so much work. Hmm. Um, I think I want to see more from Dark Raider in this game. Like, right, he played a good Kunkka, don't get us wrong. Like, he played a great Kunkka, but it just felt like he wasn't, like, a, this kind of dominant player factor. he normally is. Yes. Five seconds and I think deal, having to deal with Life Stealer was a big part of that. Yeah, that life stealer got really big really fast. Actually, the jug banned first phase too, so they banned jug and life stealer. And doom. Dire will take the doom this time. Do they want the enigma? It is available. You could just first phase the doom enigma. I mean, what if they don't? There's the question of. I think that's what UIC is thinking right now. If do we want to play with or without or with or against Enigma? I mean, I think if you're Illinois, I think you just take the Enigma, right? I feel like that's totally fine. Take the Enigma, give yourself a better offlaner, or, or just pick an Ursa, which we have okay. seen do exceptionally well against Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, so get on top of it and beat could, him down. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how dominant that Winter Wyvern was last game? Oh, yeah, the, was he the guy at the bottom of net worth? Yeah. Bottom <laughs> net worth. No, he absolute did a, he did a playmaker. Fantastic job. Absolute uh, playmaker. Last two Five fights, he hit a four-man. I know he had a four-man winner's curse. I think he had two four-man winner's curse. If not, then it was a four-man and a three-man. There's the Grimstroke getting grabbed, and Pugna wow. coming up from SBU. The That's hero a Nozong or Dark Raider classic. So both of those, both of those people play it. I um, want to see Dark Raider on Kunkka, or on Pugna. Yeah. I think we'll probably see that as the mid Pugna, right? Because you already have Nozom, which probably going to be playing the. Actually, Nozom. I I know I've seen Nozom play as like Pugna as a support multiple times on SBU. Mm -hmm. I want it to be the Dark Raider, Pugna, and I think it could be because uh, SBU doesn't have last pick. Ten seconds remaining. Maybe. But right yeah. now, there's no way to tell, and that's Five why it's. Seconds remaining. Great pick. Bat Rider's the one who's. Uh, taken up. That rider, obviously, a strong combo with both Grimstroke Dying and Ursa. Back. Monkey King. I like the ban. So that's to deal with Ursa, who's to deal with Doom. Yeah, it also, if you pick the Monkey King for the, like, the mid lane as well, it, it stops the possibility of going, like, Kunkka. Um, it's decent against Medusa. Like, there's a couple heroes. It, it's it's pretty decent. It's a a good matchup, I think. Five seconds remaining. Going to reserve time for a ban. SVU might be shook. <sighs> I mean, these bans are so important. 
radiant. Yeah. You think about it. Nina, they don't want the respect. I really appreciate the respect. Uh, Shadow Shaman is in the pool. Winter Wyvern is in the pool. Uh, Lich, who's been falling off of popularity, is in the pool. Bane is in the pool, which SBU might grab. Yeah, I mean, what do you pair with this Grimstroke? There's so many good options Ten still available. Remaining. They could take the Razor. Oh my Five goodness. Remaining. They could. You could also uh, just pick up then the they Lich. Towers, though. You could always just go Lich Grimstroke. We've seen it yep. multiple times. Still pretty decent. But I think this will most likely be the Grimstroke Ursa lane uh, heroes that it's it's a combo that just is so good. You get a slow, followed up by a stun, followed by another slow, and just stack and fury swipe. They ban the CK. Alright. I was a hero, they first phase banned last game, and they just I like, don't want to deal with it. Yeah. SBU known for their CK. I believe that's Frankie's hero, isn't it? I don't know. I think it would be Frankie's hero. Or maybe Romelia? It I could be Romelia as well. A... I think they've both played it. Um, they actually respect ban the Lina for Stop the Madness. Yeah, he played like phenomenal it. last game, making a very difficult lane for Dark Raider, which is surprising. Reserve time again. A lot of time for the drafts. They might have to try and deny Shadow Shaman, or else you're playing against Pugna Shadow Shaman. Yeah, that would be very scary, actually. Unless they... I mean, do you want to pick a Shadow Shaman right here on UIC? Could you? You need Tower Push. Good. It's great with Grimstroke. I think you and get And you don't want them to have it. Great with Ursa as well. What do yeah. you do against the Ursa Shadow Shaman lane? You just die. I think they put Grimstroke in that lane and, and send Shadow Shaman to another one. Like, Grimstroke has plenty enough CC for an Ursa. Yeah. Doesn't take much. Dire team. I like your thought process. Wow. Elder Titan? Who are these guys again, Ricky? I don't know. Who do they think they are, at least? I mean, okay, honestly, I love the pick. This is one of my favorite heroes. Yeah. Undying. That's the shoe undying. Oh, they let the shoe undying through. Yeah, that's a that's a oh, classic, iconic boy. shoe hero. But can we just take a moment to talk about Elder Titan? This guy, he's been to Staples. He's been to Office Max. He's got all oh, of the supplies no. he needs putting him in his briefcase, and he's just going to start going to town on these guys, <sighs> teaching them a lesson. Ten seconds remaining. Are you done? He's going to do it. He's going to just smack him with the briefcase <laughs> over and I'm over again. I'm not excited for this pick anymore after that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Now I'm 100% team shoe undying. <laughs> Maybe that'll be a turtleneck, though. Turtleneck Elder Titan. I, I like think it is that. a turtleneck Elder Titan. Because Grimstroke's definitely going to be more of a five position in this game, and I believe yeah. Dubois is the five. Dire team pick. Venomancer? Who are these guys? I mean, that's really good the with their lineup. It is disgusting with their lineup. That's wild. Um, now, is that core Elder Titan support Venom? Uh, no, that's definitely core Venom. This is going to be like a mid Venom, I think. Either mid or offlane Venom for sure. And why the Venno? Um, it stacks really well with Elder Titan. His spirit's the one that reduces magic resist. So you reduce a lot of their like damage reduction against Venomancer. Grimstroke yeah. like has a lot of magic damage as well. And Amp Venomancer just kind of kites Doom and Undying. Like he overall like in this lineup from Illinois, I think they have a lot of kind of odd crowd control, not like hard stuns, but between Elder Titan's Stomp, you have Grimstroke Slow, you have Ink Swell, Venomancer. There's a lot of different things that they can kite around with. Yeah. Yeah, Venomancer having the best slow. Um, and there's no mobility from SPU to deal with the Stomp. Stomp is a fantastic spell. And there's no one who can leap away from it or zip there's away no from stopping it or it teleport either. away Maybe from it. Back. PL, he can doppel away from it. Okay, so you have to have a core that can get out of stomp. Very important. I think Phantom Lancer, we, we've talked about how he pairs up against Ursa, right? Because Fury Swipe stays on the hero. But you can purge Gale. You can dodge stomp. Um, you can't doppelganger out of the silence from Grimstroke, but Phantom Lancers almost always go a Manta. So pretty good hero here. Ten seconds yep. remaining. Grimstroke we haven't... is good against Phantom Lancer. Well, though. hold on. Five seconds um, remaining. I'm pretty sure... 
um, Poison Nova stays on PL through Doppelganger. Poison Nova does. Gale does not. But yeah, that's one of those, like, and so does Ursa's Fury Swipe stays on PL through yeah, Doppelganger. So it's more of a, like, you're not going to fool us type of scenarios, but... Yeah, which we've seen lose games in the past. Yeah. Grimstroke also, I think I think I talked to you about this. If you if you Soulbind near a Phantom Lancer, it'll always target the real one. So if, like, mm -hmm. PL's running down lane and with a bunch of illusions and another hero, Please you can just Soulbind the hero and it'll immediately Soulbind Phantom Lancer. Now I can't Doppelganger. Five yep. Seconds. So it's pretty Many solid. Many ways to deal with him. Yeah. Going to the last picks. Now it could be a safe lane Venno, although Venno's a hero that wants. Well, you leave Venno al alone at level three, I think. Yeah. Like you could mid lane the Venomancer now that they have a PL, um, because. PL doesn't really care too much about Venom in lane. The thing is, Venomancer is just going to go... Uh, he'll, he like won't scale the, his Q at all. He's just going to go Poison Sting and wards. Um, four points in Poison Sting first and just harass. Yeah, Ven Venom's landing phase is... It's fun to be the Venom. It's not oh, really yeah. fun to not be the Venom. Yeah, I actually don't think Doppelganger purges Poison Touch. It, it purges Gale, but I don't know if you can purge Poison Touch. Not a clue. We'll have to find out. It, there's so many, like, random spells that are like, yeah, this is purgeable, but this one isn't. And you're like, but why? Ice yeah. Frog, please. <laughs> broodmother. Okay. They're worried about oh, a Broodmother pick, apparently. Dude, you pick the Venomance from the Broodmother, and I just throw up on my keyboard and can't finish casting <laughs> the game. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'd love to see that. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, they would lose to a Broodmother so fast. How do you stop it? There'd be no stopping that Broodmother from just taking all of your all of your buildings. Ember Spirit. Okay. Well, Ember Spirit could maybe deal with it. Ember Spirit might have. Snap pick. Alchemist. Okay. Uh, I honestly, Alchemist is usually a scary last pick, but when I see Dark Raider go Ember Spirit, that's also very terrifying. And when I see Shu go undying, that's also very terrifying. Remelia on PL, I wish I was scared of that, but I just don't like PL. Yeah, PL is a hero that I, I don't think is super strong right now, but this is a game where it might actually work out. Like, he might have a decent laning phase because he is going to be against the uh, Venomancer. Um, Alchemist, I am a little unsure of. I think it, it, he's going to find farm no matter what, but I don't think he necessarily shuts down an Ember Spirit. And in the mid game, he's going to be under a lot of kind of threat from just shoe plus one. Um, yeah, so we'll but, see. Um, I'd like to game see. Venomancer thrives. So Venomancer is... is yeah. Do, is, he's the space um, maker, you're right. Yeah, he's USC's ticket to the mid game. I, I would like to see Shu start mid, if I'm honest. I think Shu should definitely start mid. Not against uh, Can the he deal? actually, though? I don't even know if he can. Oh, man. Because the other the side lanes hard. are going to struggle too. Ursa's lane is going to be free. It's very hard for UIC to fight at the bounty runes against Undying as well. Yeah. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number two between University of Illinois Shoe Chicago and Stony Brook University. One Alchemist level thirteen. Yep. That's that <laughs> feels good. <laughs> yeah. So SPU could lose O2 here. Or it could come back, Set making this it match the plan. series even. Mm. Have fun. Well, I like the sportsmanship. Be some action. All right, we'll take a look here. We got P get, uh, PK on Fuzzy Wuzzy. We've got Stop the Madness playing Alchemist in the mid lane. Turtleneck playing Grimstroke played an amazing Nyx Assassin last game. Uh, Sammy going to be playing the Venomancer. And last but not least, Deboy, a guy who uh, for some reason put Gold Colts in his name, but... Some and just manages to play well, so uh, maybe it's not a curse. We'll find out. I heard he's just a, a da boy. Like uh, he's just a boy. Yeah, that would be that would be why. Just a boy against the world, that world. Well, coming in with the smoke gank, or rather, uh, about to be smoke gank. We have Shu on his staple hero on dying. Frankie, the Eternal King himself, will be playing Doom on the other side of the map. Dark Raider mid on Ember Spirit. Nozom on Pugna. And Ember Ooh, and uh, PL, who's being pressured right now, Remelia. Remelia was on fire last game. Let's see what he can do with the Catman this game. So they actually go Gale 1. They miss it. 
And now all five heroes top lane, so they're gonna have to run bottom. They will get both I, of the uh, top. I like for the sure. committal for five. There's no way. Look at Shu, twenty to K. Yeah, this is his hero, man. He is completely fine to fight. Oh, another one. Give him another one. They're gonna kill him. Yes. Oh, baby. Oh, last Smack him. Use the cell. The Camellia. Oh, Gale will connect on two. Does get purged by Doppelganger. They're gonna keep smacking him. Decay comes out again. How many times have 32. we seen Shu get a first blood on Undying? It's like you can't underestimate Undying, but you especially cannot underestimate the Shu Undying, and yet the mistake is made again and again and again, Ricky. But I honestly, as a caster, I'm thankful for it. Yep. All right, Sammy, top lane. I don't think Venomancer is gonna have a great time here. Undying is just well, gonna body him out. Mm -hmm. Especially with that first blood gold, he's gonna be having a pretty early boots. Oh yeah, goes for the wand first. He knows that the sentry or the Venom wards are coming. If they're not now. It's a great double bouquet. She was so comfortable on this hero. Yeah, he's gonna take a lot of damage from Elder Titan, but he doesn't care. He'll deny himself here pretty soon. Mm hmm. Going back in, he's just gonna find Sammy. God, doing such a good job just chasing him out. Uh, bot lane. Ursa took a lot of damage, bottom yeah. lane. Infernal Blade, level 1, plus the uh, Pugna, so able to just kind of trade that pretty well. Top lane, he gets him again! Shoot, what a yeah. god! <laughs> I love how the Undying has his, has his good laugh too. Yeah, he it laughs every time he gets a funny. kill. Frankie well, getting low too, but this bottom lane's been super scary. Multiple heroes sitting really low HP. In the mid lane though, Alchemist is actually winning the farming fight. Oh yeah, I mean he does he doesn't do bad against Ember Spirit. He has good base damage. Once he has Quelling Blade and Acid Spray down, he should be able to secure all the last hits. Yeah. He doesn't really get zoned out until Ember Spirit has like. Multiple levels in uh, flame Zero guard chains and flame guard, and yeah. even then he takes he sits in the acid spray the whole time. So yeah, yeah, we're gonna see a pretty farmed out this game. Just you not getting tired here. Out of mana, is this where he goes for the deny? Uh, probably soon. Yeah, he might wait for a couple like one more decay and then run to tower. Um. No Zom, so it is the No Zom Pugna, you are correct. Frankie on the Doom. Uh, it's very difficult to kill Pugna, pretty difficult to kill Doom as well, even with the hero strong as Ursa. They have to get a very good Ink Swell and a lot of Fury Swipe stacks. Yep. I heard a Stomp come out. And not dodged. Dodge. Yeah, I mean, this is Doppelganger, right? He probably won't need, want to go more than one point in it early. Um, I would say maybe two points by like seven, just to reduce the cooldown, because at that point, you actually need to reliably purge Gale and probably stomp. So we'll mm -hmm. see what he does. Yeah. And I really like Doom going the Troll Trapper here. Not the Seder? I mean, he hasn't found a Seder, mm -hmm. but uh, the Troll Trapper is pretty solid because it, it will you know, CC up Ursa, prevent him from dying, but also allows Pugna to get a great... Uh, yeah, and they're gonna use it right now, following up an Infernal Blade, Scorched Earth as well. Inks well on Ursa, but he was trying to run away, a miscommunication from SPU in the laning phase. Yeah. Top side we see a Gale come out, and we're giving Shoes a... in trouble here, Undying is the one taking the beat down, Stomp is dodged by PL, Shoes running from Elder Titan, Shoe hits another Decay as he runs into tower range, PL's on the backside coming to help him out, smacks the Elder Titan, no he doesn't, just goes right back to CS. We haven't looked at mid too much. Undy or an undying. Alchemist is doing well, but so is Ember Spirit. Obviously, yeah, Alchemist does more too. well with greed, but Convincing Ember is the hero we see. We've seen Ember get shut down in the mid lane and still own the mid game multiple times. This time, Ember is not getting shut down, and Dark Raider is playing him. Frankie is actually crushing bot lane now. Uh, okay, I was like, I didn't miss a kill, did I? And then, but like, two supports just go yeah. kill themselves to towers. Yep. <laughs> Very well done. Wait, I'm confused. How did... And there it is. What just happened, actually? They the... they got him. They, yeah. they they just chased up on him. Immediately, Turtleneck comes back. I think Turtleneck actually broke Doom's <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
I'm so confused. Undying died to the dire, didn't he? Bottom is so lost. how did how did Shu die to the dire? Oh. That's where I was I was like actually dumbfounded. I had no idea what was going on. Weird. They're gonna get all four runes. That's four runes for an alchemist. Four runes for an alchemist. Check out the net worth. Suddenly 800 gold in his pocket. Oh, look at him compared to Ember Spirit. That's that's 1,200 ahead already. My god. And yet his team is still behind. He's level 6 now. He doesn't have to worry about dying anytime soon to this mid lane Ember now. Mm -hmm. Smacks him around a few times. Gets the CS. Now, are we having any snack stacks made? Uh, I think he's just going around trying to just farm them in between. Now that he has a soul ring, we'll probably see him stacking on the high ground. Oh, top lane, stomp. We'll connect one, but PL, who cares? Gets the Gale at least, is the one in trouble. Fairy Fire even committed for this. She wants to go a little deeper. No, he's just throwing off the decay. PL, no. Now they're going to go on the Elder Titan. Elder Titan sitting on no bonus damage, chasing down the PL. He has a salve. Is actually pop. Here is a stomp. Great She's job from now. boy himself. Gale in one second. Shu turning to fight. Shu has a decay. Can't get the double, but he does get the kill. Turns on Venomancer. Shu is not scared of anything. He's Venomancer gotta be scared keep now. Going this on is him. poison sting. He, he should gonna go make down. A drop. He can mango decay, but I think he's just gonna die. No, he jukes him out, unfortunately. Those spells. PL is coming in for the deny, but then the Gale wore off. Grimstroke dropped low bottom, but he's gonna make it away. Yeah. The uh, decrep from Pugna is actually doing so much work in this lane. Every time Ursa tries to make a play, he just decreps him. Mm -hmm. Doom is, is, is not really having a problem bottom. He's just constantly farming. Yeah, Doom is, Doom is huge. 36 last hits to the 22 of the Ursa. Actually, find Pugna. Can they catch oh, him? Oh, Dark Raider comes out. Yeah, he's well bottom. They do catch him. Boom, as a kill. Um, Great rotation there from the boy. Um, Venomancer. Dark Raider has hit. Oh, what were you gonna nope. say? Um, Venomancer found Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit ran away, which is odd because Ember Spirit has an arcane rune. Uh, oh, I thought like those were just, like, yeah. They, they just ran into each other in the jungle. And then Ember Spirit just let him live. <laughs> Venomancer farming his favorite point on the map. Actually going two yeah. points in Gale seems a little weird to me. I don't think in this game is Gale strange. is that good. Um, he doesn't want to go the ward build, I guess. I think he knows he, he can't fight these guys with wards. Oh, Tombstone oh, used top tower. Is. They're going on Venomancer. They either force the TP out or in, but... No serious change to how many creeps are there. Oh, he doesn't even level. He has four. He has zero points in it. Stomp does connect on Ember. This top tower should go down here with catapult. And the yeah, the tombstone's still there. They can't contest. Bottom side, they also cannot contest the Doom Pugna lane. The demons. The great rotation there from the Ember Spirit to get that tower. Teleports back um, mid. Venomancer really needs to start scaling here. I'm a little worried for that hero. He has not had a very successful lane. Uh, however, you do have an alchemist on your team who's about to have a relic here nine minutes into the game. Very, very good. Bound, next bounty runes will be important. We'll see if UIC can make the same play or if SBU has learned from their mistakes. Shu is also positioned bottom and so has Du Bois, Elder Titan. Very poor Elder Titan. That's a five Elder Titan. Yeah. He didn't want to be a 5, but it ended up happening. Yeah, he's there to stomp, not there to click. Click a staple gun on people's faces. Okay, making moves around. They're looking for something. Or see him on that side, they have a great ward there. So they know they're ready. Now they they're coming back though. in, they catch. Grimstroke, Phantom's Embrace, Hadouken comes out, Grimstroke dropping low, Infernal Blade. Shu not even revealing himself, yes she will. Dark Raider's here though, mm -hmm. he wants more. On the back side, does not have a point in steering change. He's just chasing this gentleman he down. He has three remnant charges, so he should be able to get this. If he wants to, yes. Goes for one. Slight. Yeah, there we go. Takes him out. So he just needs to stay on him and uh, pressure. 
All right, let's take a look at net worth here. We have 6,800 on this alchemist. Next closest is 42. This dude's almost 3,000 net worth ahead. Yep, that's what he does. But on the other side, all three cores of SBU are farming pretty well. Yep, they're doing a great job. All right, Shu collects two. Up lane, Venomancer pushing a tower. He's level seven now. I'm assuming he got the tome. I, I don't know how he would have gotten level seven out of, out of that. Yeah. PL's used doppelganger, so they're gonna go for him. He does have a TP. Stomp. It's not connect. Amelia cutting a tree to stay safe. All right, Dark Raider again doing the same thing we just saw, just pushing PK out. And uh, that level 4 Slide of Fish is actually a lot of damage. Bonus 160 to your hero. Okay. Now Ursa moving in. On the side. Ember Spirit has friends. Here comes Doom. Drops it on Alchemist. Alchemist gets the Chemical Rage off. They switch their attention to Ursa. Ursa has been decrepified, keeping him alive. That's actually no Zombs decrepify. Ursa might die. Dark Raider is not going to let that happen. He finishes him off. Hit by Gale, trying to get the Remnant out, but those are affected by Gale as well. Dark Raider Ooh. just TPs in his face. What a yep. play. Sends, Bait sends with the Remnant. remnant one way. Undying yep. going to die, though. Yeah, poor Shu, but that's what Shu does. I mean, he is undying, so he'll be back, you know. And that was behind a tier 1 tower. Yeah, they, I mean, that was behind a tier 2 tower. That was just in the front of the... They were, like, on the high ground. Yeah. <coughs> Going for that kill. <laughs> oh, Alchemist is starting to be... This is, like, the best time on Alchemist. Oh, and yeah. Get the, the right, right into Radiance. Um, and Alchemist's talents are insane. Too. He's going to go the Unstable point. Concoction cooldown. You don't need it yet, right? That's yeah. probably one of the best talents. That's probably, honestly, one of the best level 10 talents in the game. Well, cause look at what it does with the level 20 talent that just makes... You know, you're playing against Alchemist, and you know he's getting out of control, and you're like, maybe his talents aren't good. And then you look at his level 20 talent, and you're like, no, his talents are really, really good. And yeah. then you realize his level 10 talent also combines with that. Yeah, they did nerf the level 20 talent, so that Ooh. it's... Ooh, did they get... Did they get uh, they got a chain. Chains, chains are still actually chains in a lot of trouble. He's yeah, trapped. Yes, he's, he gonna, he's giving up his life. Very, very... Oh, he's, he's buying some time here. Pugna silence. Alchemist comes in. Level one concoction on Pugna, putting damage on him. But on the backside, yeah, we will see. There's a radiance just Doom in absolutely trouble. tearing Pugna him apart. Alchemist is very dangerous right now. He with radiance, he might chase two people down. <coughs> Known for being quick, but Alchemist looks to be quicker, especially with the concoction. Alchemist is just going to double kill, and he's trying to farm, but he's farming heroes. Alchemist rolling up on Dark Raider. Dark Raider does a good job remnanting out, but Levanum is ready to him for a moment. Venomancer shows up with his spell. They drop his support, but we may see He's Ember super dead. He's out. got Poison Nova and Gale. He's going to take out. You guys yeah. see. This is the mid game we want from them. <coughs> well, the, Ember, the, the Alchemist double kill was, you know, he is feeling very good about that. I don't think that should have happened. Yeah, gets a Radiance um, and just runs down two heroes. UIC are in a dominating position right now going into the mid game. Yeah, I but would Alchemist like them to just continue. Not online. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if if UIC continue playing around this alchemist, they don't play super greedy and just like and just concentrate on farming. I think they can pretty handily run over Stony Brook here because all the fights should go in their favor right now. They have a very very strong lineup currently with the Venomancer, the Elder Titan, and of course uh, the Alchemist. So yeah, we'll see what they do. If they do decide to take this late, I think it's all right. But you do have to think about how well. Stony Brook scales here. Turtleneck, does he get caught? String chain's not in time. He will he will get the TP. What do you think about Elder Titan level 10 talents? Probably first of all, you probably don't get them at level 10. Yeah, you but... actually just need like your your talents, I'm pretty sure. I think in most games you'd probably take the health. The movement um, speed does increase the movement speed of your spirit as well though. That is true. Maybe you do want movement speed. I think both are pretty good. Yeah. Both, both are going to work every single game. You'll benefit. Here's a smoke coming out on Ursa, though, near the shrine. It's popped. Remnants. It, Rage is going to buy some time. There's no follow-up after that, so they just drop a ward and continue This Ursa went straight Midas, I just realized. Um, How do you feel about that? I guess Venomancer is going to be strictly the space maker, so Ursa and Alchemist can farm as the strategy. The lane, there's a huge initiation here. Yeah, Soulbind comes out. Venomancer dropping low. There is the split Earth. They might be able to finally drop. 
Undying's the only one to die. Next, Ember Spirit being chased down once again. UIC looking great. They get all of them. They got both. No, no, they just No, no, Doom gets the TP, but... Yeah. That's... Yeah, I mean, they they have Soulbind, and it sets up just like a perfect ink swell onto the cores there. Uh, or, like, they get the Doom off on Alchemist, but he manages to get Chemical Rage in time. And if he gets yep. Chemical Rage off, you're not killing him. Exactly, it's just... It's it's so such a crazy interaction on Alchemist, but you just gotta keep your your finger on the trigger. Always always a little bit of pressure on the R key, because if, if you any any sign of a fight, you just press that button. If you get it off more times than not, that was that was the right play. So far, really liking UIC's movements. They're now grouped up in the mid lane. They want this mid tower. They have Manta finished on Alchemist. Do you think that Alchemist should be in this here for this push, or he should be in the jungle hitting creeps? He should definitely be here. If someone can test and they want to make a fight out of it, they can get the kill, no problem. Top lane, Sammy actually going to go down here to Dark Raider. Can he keep him alive? Oh, Maybe not. TPing doesn't out. Doesn't have the chains. Oh my gosh. Barely lives. Mid lane tower goes down. Sleep. Yep. There's and no they're going to take the Kunkka, and they're going to take the ward, and they're going to take the um, tombstone. Grimstroke Alchemist is classic. fine killing the zombies, actually. He gets yeah. 32 gold each time. Oh, he doesn't want to do it. Gets 32 also bonus, putting it over 200 gold bounty for that. Uh, Ursa getting bashed to death? He is over, Alchemist is over double the net worth of the PL, who's the next closest. And PL's getting so, a lot of farm, which is, is pretty yeah. important, but... But this is what you expect from an Alchemist as well. Yep. And they're just gonna give him an Aegis. Blink Dagger is his next item, playing that hyper-aggression build. Fight ready. Yeah. Yep. Gonna pick up that 50 damage at level 15. Because he's going to be a big deal. A lot of people do the 400 health as well. That's a lot of health. It is. A lot of damage too. Those are great talents. Holy cow. Yeah. Alchemist's talents are great. That's why he's so strong like pre-30 minutes. is like you just get so much farm, so many items. And no matter what talents you choose, you're actually just such a, such a threat. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, another tower being pressured. Alchemist and Venomancer combined. Bot lane. PK gets taken down a little bit by Nozom, but we'll just shrine him back away. PK's got to be careful. He actually gets his Blink Dagger finally, but he still has only a Midas. So he's just going to continue jungling and let this Alchemist Veno just take over the map. Yeah. And if he gets an Ags late game from this uh, Alk, it's actually insane how good that's going to be. Well, the T2 now, Ricky. Undefended. Yeah, I mean, you, how do you... You can't defend this. If you're this is, SBU, it is so dangerous. Yeah. You have to split push Digger. like what you're doing on Pugna. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Ooh, great. PK blinks in to try and get a play on Dark Raider, but gets chained up. Nothing you can do about that. But lane tier 2, they're trading it. Yeah. So UIC, but, their goal right now is to take tower, to take the objectives. Yeah, Alchemist is the biggest boy on the map, and they want to make sure they've used that, and I like to see it. Pugna can't leave bot lane, I don't think. I think he actually has to just continuously push this lane. Because now UIC, they're either going to go high ground mid, or they're going to push bot. And it looks like they're going to go high ground mid. Yeah. They have ages, so why not, I guess. Right There's the tombstone. Alchemist is hitting the tower. Decays are coming out. Elder Titan wants to come in too. Great three stomp. Man stomp. Three man oh They try and do something with this. Here comes a concoction. Go on Doom. Doom hits Alchemist right after. Soulbind comes out. Not a double concoction, unfortunately, but that's a combo we'll be looking out for. They did get the double Alchemist. concoction, actually, but I'm wondering, does the second concoction, because it's instant cast, just like not do anything? Since it's not Ooh, channeled, not sure. I think that's because I think previously when before they nerfed the damage to being base damage at 20, I think that's why it was so good. But now I think it's just like an, a, a mini stun. Ah, I want to see the deny. interaction because I actually don't know. Here we are again. They haven't done much damage to the T3. UIC is kind of stressing me out here. They do have an Aegis they want to use, though. Oh, Alchemist cool. once again gets his ult. Disarmed on the tower to crap. Mantis has nice. a concoction, he wants to throw it, he's going to connect on Shu. Dark Raider putting a lot of damage out, but now he's going to get an Atos up, and the Krebs keeping him alive. He makes it to the back. 
Chemical Rage about to drop once again. They're going to make a last attempt have another to go in. Stone? Nope, not going to use it. No. Venomancer might be left behind here if he's not careful. PL able to just farm during this too, as he, he's been pushing out top lane. So they don't actually get tier 3 mid. It's a really big yep. deal to hold that. Alk now going to be able to farm a ton in this bot lane. He's going to push out three waves consecutively. Yeah, and he's got his Manta style. He loves this. Down here, he's up, up, power he's up in it, but runs right into a PL on PK and he's dead. That is two for two on bounties. Yeah, two for two. Rest in peace, Ursa. Midas Blink Dagger, he is very squishy. Going Basher next, he's going to be the pressure hero. Yep. All right. Boots of Travel completed on the Alchemist. So the little map pressure just increasing for the side of UIC. Yep. Now this 8,000 gold lead is entirely on uh, the Alchemist, right? Like, or 9,000 gold lead at this point. That is the difference. Yep. It is Alk to PL. But if yep. you're... Uh, Stony Brook, it's not the end of the world. Like, they actually have farm on their cores. Like, they can hold this. Oh, yeah. And Venomancer, not a hero that scales particularly well. Um, also beaten pretty badly by BKB. There isn't really a BKB carrier, although Ember can pick it up. He has it queued up already, actually. Yeah, I think Ember, Doom, both go BKBs this game. Um, Doom going pipe first. I think that's perfect. That's that also works. Yeah, you just need... Like, pipe to help keep your team alive, and then probably just BKB after that. Yeah. Also allows you to get creep waves onto the high ground if you find yourself in a position to push. Well, we got a smoke bottom lane here from UIC. Alk going to take the lane, and there goes Aegis. Aegis is used, yep. They want this bot tower. Like I said, they need to start taking towers, and... Uh, Turtle not going to walk right into, into Romelia, but he's going to doppelganger her away. No real fight. Looking for a stomp. Words are placed by you. I see. We now see. Now it gets the first tower. He's almost got a Shiva's actually. That's his next item. I thought he was queuing up Octarine, but I like the Shiva's way more. Yeah, kills kills illusions. Also helps team fight with his blink dagger. Yeah, and it's just more more armor, right? Alk needs armor pretty badly. But I see channeling can. Oh, he's going. He's going. Mid, he's going. But... Oh, okay. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Tier two. There it goes. DD bot. They see it on the dire, but. Alk's not here, they in. can actually take a fight. You might find something. Here's a root from a creep. Dark Raider needs to connect with the chains. He does not connect with the chains. Stomp coming out. High ground tombstone, though, looks great for SBU. First to fall is going to be Elder Titan. Now, a Soulbind comes out. Some pressure coming out from Venomancer, but he gets doomed up. Dark Raider, or rather Ursa, finds himself in a position he likes in melee range, but with five heroes around him, he gets deleted on the base. He's going to snipe him with the key. Yep, Dark Raider. Finishes him off. Everyone Doom L.U. As I see, really don't want right, to get that not over for them. That was, I mean, you talked about it. Shu getting the tombstone on the high ground. All of University of Illinois was just trapped in a little corner, right? They're just stuck Maybe right here. And they just yep. go down so fast. Goes yep. on, gets a mid tower as well. And like we said, Alchemist wasn't there to, to, at the start of that fight, right? They saw him TP nope. mid. Uh, Doom just TPs right to the shrine, pops the drums, is like, guys, we need to fight right here. We can't let them get away with this. And that's yeah. just really good heads up awareness from Stony Brook there, just knowing when they need to, when they can take their advantage. Yeah. Um, yeah, very well done. That's not to say, though, that UIC would uh, have lost if Alchemist was there. In fact, they might have won that fight. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, if Alk was yeah. there, that fight would have been very different, I think. So SVU takes a win when they can, but that does not necessarily mean they're winning, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Are we on the same page? Well, thank you. All right, Shiva's completed on Alk. He's going the Octarine next, it looks like, which he will need. Two pairs of boot, one for Razzle Dark Brew, one for the Ogre. Does the Ogre uh, have a name? Yeah, I think that's right. What's the Ogre's name? Oh, uh... Razzle Dark Brew is the gnome on top, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Dark Root is is Alchemist. That is who he is. The Ogre is not Alchemist. Yeah, but I mean, the, but does the Ogre have a name? Uh, I don't remember actually. I'd have to look it up. He probably does, right? I don't think. I hope so. I don't. I think they. Uh, this is a consenting relationship between the two. There, you know. Oh yeah, they helped. The, the Razzle helped them. The Ogre break out of prison. That's what yeah. I meant. Yeah. Because he was also in prison. All 
right, mid lane, some pings coming out. Ember has a spear. No, he doesn't have a spear back. He's gotta be careful. Uh, can they immediately catch him? Probably not. It'd have to be like a first hit uh, bash from Ursa, so he's actually okay for now. Ursa actually, as I say that, bash is coming out on Courier. There it is. So he's still a glass cannon, Ursa. Yeah. Kills he's gonna... quickly and dies quickly. Uh... Runes, three for one. For UIC. Dark Raider pops an Dark Raider's actually. gonna find someone. Saw an Ursa. Pursuing him, but there's no kill potential as no one's going with him. Oh my gosh. Alchemist. I looked at him like less than a minute ago, and he was like, had queued up Octarine, and now I look at him, and he just has an Octarine and like a 200 yep. gold. Yep. This hero. And then he has great eggs uh, to give out. Yeah, Ursa, this game there's so many good ones. Venomancer, Spirit, uh, Elder Titan, I mean. Yeah, that uh, 50, it's what, a 7 second disarm? And like, how, what's... It's I have a very to... long time. I think it's it's uh, the duration of, um, yeah, 7 or slow, 4, 5, 6 of the duration. 4, but 5, still, 6, can't, okay. Spirit, Spirit can't, um, can't slight during that. Yeah. And so it's a slow and disarm versus only being a slow. And the damage yep. doesn't increase, right? It's just the same. It just adds the disarm. I believe so, yeah, because the damage is max HP. Yeah. Making Elder Titan one of the best refresher carriers in the game. He's just sitting in the Roach pit, like, guys, it's going to spawn eventually. Don't, don't oh, mind. Oh, yeah, they me. know. They got the timer. I don't know why they don't just put us. Oh, I was like, there it goes. I was like, they can just put yeah. a Venno Ward in there and not waste a boy's time. All right, both teams kind of grouped up for the most part. Right. Ursa finally finding some farm. He was a little bit below for a while, but BKB gonna be his next item. Level 15 gets the agility instead of the fury swipe reset time. I think that's correct. All right. Bot lane, Alchemist TP's here, and they're just gonna back. They're like, yeah, we can't fight him. So, Romelia's queuing up a Heart of Tarask as his next item. Yeah. And Alchemist is picking a level 20 talent. Easy. 400 unstable concoction damage, pretty much always. Yes. Yeah, he getting pinged in the mid lane. Can they do anything? Nope. Dark Raider has his BKB Maelstrom going Shiva's next, but UIC just goes right into the Roach Pit. It's available. They have Ursa. They have Acid Spray. Alchemist seems... or Alchemist probably gets it, right? Uh, I think you put it on Ursa, Drop honestly. Yeah, I think okay. you should give it to Ursa. Th Ursa not having the best game yet, but with an Aegis, we'll see what he can do. Yeah, it's very hard for them to kill this Alchemist, and Ursa is probably the Doom target, to be honest. It's either it's either Ursa or Venno. Like, Alchemist well, is gonna get his get ult Alchemist off. before alt. Yeah, that's true. If you can get him before ult, then for sure. But this game, they they've had a lot of troubles doing that. So. And the decay starts. Ursa goes in, gets the bash. He's looking for to prep on Doom. Doom comes out. Great communication. They immediately go for it. Switch the target back to Doom. UIC looking great. They have bound the souls of Doom. Two undying, the decrep even do him alive even longer, but not long enough. He immediately buys back. Here goes the Aegis. Doom is back in the fight. Doom has his ultimate. What does UIC do? A stomp comes out. Fantastic. It's oh, the immediate Doom. Doom comes All right. out. Doom on Ursa. Ursa is going to drop for the second time here. They want more. There's no ultimate on Alf. Like, they can Venomancer. get more kills here. Venomancer will be the next to fall. The same way UIC stopped SBU at their base, SBU will stop UIC in game two. All right, great high ground defense there. They, they buy back on Doom, but they get the kill and the Aegis on Ursa. And they follow up the Venomancer as well. Hmm. Bounty runes will be up in a minute as well. Going two for two still puts you at an advantage in Bounty runes with yep. Alchemist. Absolutely. So Hart picked up on PL. He's he's very tanky now. The problem you have with PL this game is it's very hard for him to just like go super deep in these fights because he's just taking so much AOE. There's just so much like AOE damage in general. So he yeah. needs he needs a, like a really big damage item next. Pro okay, he's gonna go. I was gonna say Butterfly, but he's gonna go Scotty next. 
Help um, uh, lock down the Ursa and the Alchemist. Yeah. You can go pretty quick. It's just more stats, too. Like, PL needs to be uh, so Agamems. tanky. On Venomancer? No. Venomancer on Ursa probably first. Yeah, I would put it on Ursa. He's had a pretty rough game, giving him that ultimate. The stats and, the and everything stats. are pretty good. There it is. Yeah. Okay, Ursa's got it. It's like 400 health out of nowhere. What's the disable? Decrep? You can already do that. Uh, uh, you mean like, what do you enrage off? Yeah. Probably chains, to be honest, because if like you get chains, your hero's actually yeah. in a bad spot. So he'll probably enrage off searing chains. Yeah. That's or decrep, to be honest. Either one, like it gives whatever that hits him first, he'll just de he'll just enrage it because it gives him the like 80% status resist. Yeah. Or 80% less damage. And then it's what a 10 second cooldown? What is it? 18 max level. Yeah. Almost there. He'll probably pick up the Enrage Duration talent, right? 1.5 second at level 20. With an Al with uh, an Agadams, that's pretty insane. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well. Venomancer building Ato or has Ato's Greaves, so the utility. He knows he's not going to scale late. Sheepstick will help him be relevant late game, more CC. Yeah, it's also an amazing with, with Grimstroke. Grimstroke is a hero that, like, with any any Sheepstick on your team, it's insane. So, yeah. that's always And uh, nice. Aghanim's to come for Venomancer, likely next. Yeah, I'd assume it'd be, I assume it would be Venom. I can't imagine you would put it on Elder Titan before Venomancer. The Nova just it's becomes not, insane. It's not bad on the Elder Titan, giving the, uh, the disarm. the disarm. Then it offers a ton of damage, though. It's a massive upgrade. I think, it, is it more than another level? I don't know if we can check. Uh, it goes from... Yeah, level 5. Yeah. Okay, pop lane. Ursa finds Doom. Pops in rage. Getting a bash. Will it happen? Okay, this is a great kill for them. That's Eternal King. They take right. him out. Venomancer's uh, level 50 talent is amazing. I love the Gale Impact heroes. It's incredible. Yeah. It's one of my favorite talents. Um, it's so funny. In regards to the scepter damage, level two with scepter is stronger than level three without. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, I know it's a lot of damage. Plus, yeah. you can always go the poison AOE and Nova duration. I think this game you'll probably go Plague Ward health than the the yeah. Nova AOE. Do you? I don't I'm pretty know. sure you, you you. I think you always go Plague Ward health. It's the only thing that makes Venomancer stay like because you want your level twenty five talent to be winning condition. Link initiation oh, wow. on Ursa. Oh my lord. Rage used. Ursa really wants to battle here. Rooted up, BKB comes out. We will have a buyback on Pugna. Doom has fallen earlier as we yes, saw. Yes, still on Ursa. He's actually going to try and TP. Is that yeah. going to work? No, it doesn't. No, it does not. And we're going to see after a tower falls. Do I see retreat? All right. Well, they're all out. Someone's pinging PK like, bruh. Those are the T4 towers. Dyer's top shrine is under attack. Bruh. All right. Well, Stony Brook showing life. They're holding their high ground. They haven't gone out yet. Yeah. Alchemist almost had another Aghanim. not holding buyback. Not even scared. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't SB care. SBU can't get to his side of the map. I mean, SBU's high ground is slow, slow besides Pugna. Uh, like, they do yeah. have PL at least, who does a decent amount of damage. Um, but it's nothing like the side of uh, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Cast right. range on Grimstroke now, he loves that. Oh yeah, baby. It's an Aether Lens. That's like, play once you have Aether Lens on Grimstroke with the cast range, it is a good feeling. There it is. All right, let's take... Aghanim's on Venno. Yeah, Grimstroke... 125 is... damage per second. Very easy to position Grimstroke and it makes comboing with Inkswell, again, very easy. Also, being able to ward from afar. <laughs> One of my favorite interactions is cast range and placing wards. Oh, yeah. It's funny, like, I I've learned, like, playing a lot of Grimstroke, like, how far your ward cast range is, because you can de-ward high grounds from, like, areas you shouldn't be able to. Yeah. And you're just like, all right, that little cliff over there, like, I can actually reach it from the other side of the lane. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's. I, I think it's so funny how wards are affected. It makes so, sense, though. PL actually pretty substantially farmed right now. Uh, almost has Scotty. He could buy it, but holding buyback instead probably the smart move. Yeah. Um. Now, can they stay up? Can they like prevent Alchemist from just getting a ton of moon shards and uh, Aghanim scepters on the whole other team? They're gonna get three runes here again, and that's a, another like 1,200, 1,400 gold for Alchemist just off runes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Peel's doing a good job catching up. Ursa and Venomancer keeping pace though. Dark yeah. Raider falling behind. Yeah, Venomancer has been farming really well. Dark Raider has a hard time like farming this game because Alk takes so much farm on the map that yeah. there's only so much left and he doesn't want to be the one like pushing lanes because that needs to be the PL. And he also had to go a fairly defensive build, right? He had to go like BKB early, went the drums into Shiva's, so it's not the easiest game for Dark Raider here. No. But we're farming. In and out game. They definitely are. Smoke comes out from SBU. They're gonna find Venomancer right immediately. Into Veno. Oh boy. They miss the chains. Do they have yeah, a four staff? Yes, yeah. he does. Ember wants to go deep into Alchemist, pops his BKB on the top side. Grimstroke looking for a way into this fight. Doom goes in. Fantastic. Crush Soulbind comes out though. Looking good for UIC Veno. Trades for Doom. Buyback on Elder Titan. Ursa's not done yet. Alchemist either. Stunning. Undying. Stunning Pugna. Buyback on Venno. He wants to return to this fight too. Earthsplitter is going to connect up the high ground, putting a lot of damage out. SPU looking okay, but under pressure at the moment. Pugna finally falls. Doom goes with the BKB. Ursa no longer BKB running away. Great chains also connect on Grimstroke. There's the Venomancer alt, putting damage out into AoE. Turtleneck. Inkswell wants to go in, but the Alchemist has not been put down, and instead he's the one doing all of the putting down. Alt is back up. He is once again the most dangerous hero in the game. Pursuing up the high ground, chasing PL, who's burning to Radiance and to Venomancer, but staying alive with heals. Gets great a great play by the boy stomp. There. They're gonna beat him down on the back line, up on the high ground. She will fall once again. Oh, Every hero on us beat down. Buyback only on PL, who does use it. What goes on here with UIC? They want the racks. This is easily a lane of racks. Maybe two. I mean, if you're UIC, you should just go tier four. I'm at, I'm like fairly positive. They just bought back a ton of heroes. Mm -hmm. You can definitely tier no four this back. with Venomancer. Let's see what they do. This they is a surprising omegas. call. Okay. Second lane about to go. PL might be able to get a kill on Elder Titan. PL might actually get a kill on Elder Titan. Looks like around by himself. Is. Here we go. Fends him off. Pugna's back. Elder Titan. They just going Megas well. directly. Well, no mana on Alchemist actually might have repelled them. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Hmm. All right. So two lanes of racks down. That is not a good sign for Stony Brook in this game. No, it's not. No, I think you, you're right. USC might have been able to combine their forces and take the Ancient there. Yeah, I mean, that was they had a lot of time to do it. I mean, Roshan is up, and they're just going to go right into Roshan. That is a super fast respawn. Yeah, but here comes uh, Dark Raider and the boys. They Roshan know. at half. Have to know. Oh, it and Rage is just up. gone. Yeah. Here's your Aegis, Refresher, and your Cheese. Pressure shard picked up on Venomancer. That is going to be very scary. Yeah. So really I think... on Venno, not on Elder Titan. Interesting. Uh, they might swap it. Venno just picked it up because PL was running in with illusions. Yeah. Now, if you're Illinois here, do you not just shrine up, go straight through top lane? Like, can they actually stop you? You have Aegis uh, Refresher I mean, and Cheese. Why not try? Twenty six thousand gold lead. Uh, se another Aghanim Scepter coming out here. This one's going to be Du Bois for sure. Yeah. Du Bois sitting there patiently like, come on. I have yeah, waited so long. The there it is. All right. That is a five second disarm now. I am surprised Illinois is farming. I don't think they need to. Yeah. 
They have two cheeses, by the way, on Ursa, and he just got a missile now. blade. Stony Brook just trying to figure out what the heck they can do to stay in this game. They can't leave their base, realistically. Like, it is so scary to leave your base because you don't know where Illinois is. If we look at the map here, they see them actually now running into the dire jungle there. But yeah. if you walk out of your lane and you get caught, like, in the jungle in this area, it is very bad. Like, your your game is over. So they actually have to yeah. stay five, five people, essentially, at the base or near the base. Probably the only person able to split push going to be Ember Spirit as long as he has a, uh, a remnant back. And yet, I say that, and Grimstroke picks up a Hex instead of the Aether Lens. So, now very difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and what's... Uh, hex on Veno. Veno's holding buyback. Yeah, he's holding buyback. He can get a Hex soon, but... Soulbind Hex with the cast range talent is pretty amazing. Ember Spirit going for the uh, Lincoln Sphere next. They do have a BKB, like on him at least, so that in case he BKBs at first, he he will survive. But an Insta Hex is pretty insane. Oh yeah. UIC. Uh, well, UIC making their push. pressuring. SBU did a good job defending their base before. They seem to only lose fights outside of their base. See how they defend this time. They have to defend tower. Not even at full HP. This is what's stopping them from mega creeps. Yeah, Dark Raider just needs to farm bot like as much as he can. Does he, he's got to keep staying here? Is, is pretty much shoving this lane. Alchemist is going for him potentially. Uh, I, this he actually boots have traveled down here instead of scrolling. He didn't have scroll off cooldown, but he boots have traveled here, yeah. which means he can't get back top uh -oh. for another 15 seconds. See. Not in a good position anymore. It's just surprising. I, I would expect. Okay, well Alchemist he's gonna try it. Forever. Goes on him, not gonna have enough damage. Uh, I mean, that's a Shiva's on uh, Ember Spirit, so he just slows the attack speed of Alchemist so much. Yeah, trying to catch him again. Ooh, does uh, actually hit him. Stun each other. Tra pops another one. Oh my He's chasing, doesn't have blink for a second. While all this is happening, top lane, just. At a stalemate. He's coming back top, Alchemist says. Yeah. Dark Raider's gonna be home and healed though. Double damage bottom. Very useful right now. Alright, they have everything they need here. All their spells, everything is available. Cursor Trying to get well, but first we're putting damage on the tower. Alchemist now hitting the tower. Shu getting the decays. Ember Spirit putting damage out. Alchemist gonna continue chopping his team behind him. Slowly, slowly, slowly doing damage to the tier three. Being repelled. Very good job. Alchemist out of mana now without chemical rage. That might be all SBU has to do to repel. Uh, Remilia is doing a great job at focusing him with the illusions, just constantly throwing him. Yeah, yeah as the, the doppelganger cooldown at level 25. Now he does suffer by losing a good amount of damage there, but. The ability to deep push here is insane with it. Yeah, and look how many illusions just constantly sending him at Alchemist. Okay, Alchemist rooted up, taking damage now. Looks like Blink like Abyssal. Started off, does not kill the Pugna on the backside, turns his attention to the Tombstone. They do take it out. Doom goes off, so does Soulbind. Everyone's dropping low, but they're staying alive. Neck and neck, the fight's going on the high ground. We're going to see the Venomancer running away desperately. Alchemist uh, does not have mana. Does not oh, have. They have left their Ursa to die. <laughs> oh, I say that. Yeah, is he going to get a kill? DK is still dangerous. Grimstroke might actually be the one who falls here. Dark Raider goes in. Oh, just Nobody joking. has died. Nope. She was probably going to heal up here. Yep. Okay, tier 4 tower goes down. Back up on the high ground, tier 3 tower going down. Alk just wants this tower so bad. Yeah. Yeah, PL back to his old trick, stealing everyone's mana. SBU is healed up again, this looks good for them. Doom is used, so is Soulbind. Elder Titan stomps, slows down the Doom, but UIC is running low on mana on Alchemist. They have no Aegis, but they do have cheeses. One's been used. And they're just gonna back. They actually are, can't push. Sony Brook is holding somehow. 
33,000 net worth down and they are holding. Alchemist got, uh, is healed up. Mana wise. I guess Going high ground. For so long. Chemical range. Smack, 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 smack. Let's go. He is going to drop the second last racks. This is for a chance to go to land or for to go to land. Beating the best team in the league. Oh, UAC has away is one more rack. melee barracks. Uh oh, they get the Hex on Doom. We're gonna get the Ancient. Okay, Poison Nova comes out. Refresher on PL. Soulbound Doom to Undying. Ursa chasing them down. Not getting the auto attacks that they want. Looking for Ember Spirit. Not getting him either. Ursa BKB'd and ran at them with his hands up. It didn't actually get to attack once. Now SBU is the one on the Assault. Cheese 8 on Alchemist. He wants to get back in. Hex on the Pig Ember Spirit. Silence on the Pig Ember Spirit. Concoction on the Pig Ember Spirit, who is not level 25. He might drop here. Great job from UIC. Instant buyback from him and Undying. Going to the high ground. Pugna dies. Instant buyback. UIC still wants to go after three buybacks. Looking for a stun target. Connects on Doom. Shiva's out on the backside. PL is ripping up the Elder Titan. PL on the backside, looking for a new target. Doppelganger is down. The Alchemist. They're gonna drop him. Ursa oh has fallen as well. With one rack standing, SBU looks like they have repelled UIC, Ricky. All right, let's take a look at buybacks here. They used three in that fight to stay alive. And UIC, they still have a pretty significant gold advantage, but that doesn't mean you can get cocky, right? You can't just keep throwing bodies at the high ground here. Venom well, Lancer is almost capped. You yeah, know? like he's Phantom almost Lancer capped on items. Twenty-five. Phantom Lancer is—I don't like Phantom Lancer for the first twenty-four levels. I'll say that, but the last level, he's one of the best carries. He he's just so, overwhelms you. Yeah, just illusions everywhere. They do so much damage. They're so tanky. Um, one um, thing that I would say probably won them that fight was the refresher on Venom Lancer. He ended up getting two Poison Novas. First time before the buy, like before the buybacks, or in the first engagement where they like caught Aegis on Ursa. And then the second time uh, is what actually Speaking killed them of Venomancer. the Venomancer. Speaking of Venomancer, mid lane rooted Shiva cheats Atos. He drops his third Poison Nova on top of a PL and Undying and an Ember Spirit. He will be the one to fall. Uh, Ember's got to be careful. There is this is a ton of damage from this uh, Venomancer. Yeah, Ember's taking all. Yes, yes BKB. Just BKB. Wow, it's, it's not lethal damage. Uh, we had Poison Sting on him for like five more seconds. So, Poison Sting could kill him, but, yeah. Mid lane, SBU showing signs of life, taking their own tower. Yeah. It's been a while since we've seen something like that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, UIC have not made it to land just yet. Now, if you're Ember Spirit, do you have the two Slight of Fist charges or the Remnant Restore time? Too slight of fist, I think. I think so too. I think he you just need to win. You need to win one fight. And you need to. You can't. You can't. You rather you can't lose the next fight. Yeah. And the slight of fist charges is gonna put the most front loaded damage in. I agree. So Alk actually bought a BKB, just putting it in his inventory for now. When's Grimstroke getting an Ags, please? <laughs> but Ricky, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Ice Frog, give him an axe. Right. Ink Swell now has two charges. It casts Ink Swell on the people he soul binds and then it hits all the teammates. Radial Stroke of Fate, do it. <laughs> oh god. Just... Stroke of Fate, now global. Alright, okay. Ursa and okay. DD goes in a row. Side. PL is exactly what they want. They get the Doom on Alchemist. This looks amazing for SBU. Elder Titan getting deleted from the game on the backside. Ursa does find a target, but immediately stunned up. Double damage duel shot into the air. Buyback on Elder Titan. Venomancer almost back. Ursa turning his attention to Doom. Unable to finish him. There's the gist the we're looking for. But again, Ursa's unable to get any auto attacks off, even though he's close, so close to everyone. Suds up the Undying. Not really the target he wants, but any target he needs. Hit is a good target. Once again, finds the Doom. Followed up with an Abyssal Blade. Forced away. Ursa is getting kited. He's unable to do anything. Alchemist has returned to this fight on the side. Undying will drop. Doom will drop. Everyone else seems to be making it away. A okay. Ursa forces him to use the buyback as well. Both teams threatened by buybacks. Ursa or Roshan is up. Ursa's already in there. Yeah, these long en engagements end up favoring UIC a lot because Venomancer puts out so much damage over time. But so does the uh, Alchemist, right? Like, they, they kite forever with this Ursa. They can't actually kill him. 
And then over like that course of the whole fight, Venomance are just taking down the supports with the Alchemist Illusions in the background. Yeah, there is a ton of damage over time coming up from UIC. The only thing really favoring uh, SBU is heart regen abuse from PL, which is not easy to pull off. Yeah, um, these Grimstroke guys. picked up the Grimstroke picked up the refresher. I like that a lot more. So actually, I think it's it's silly on Venomancer because you can't front load it, and that's what you want to do with refreshers: just get two ults at the same time, not an ult and then another ult after. Usually, they actually catch PL okay. on the sleep. Going in with the soul bind, trying to mess up the doom, buying a lot of time. They have a tr lot of trouble killing him. On the backside, PL messing up the supports. Grim Circle buy back after falling. Undying doesn't have that option from the previous fight. Only one Rax left. Do I see? Are you going to hit it or are you going to run? Alchemist really can't decide what he wants to do. In, out, in, out, in. Yeah, out. stomps up, gets hexed. Like he wants to go in. Follow that up with a concoction. PL has a lot of life. Do you hit the PL? Do you hit the racks? Do you hit the PL? Do you hit the racks? Now there's a fortification. Ursa has used everything. Nope, there's Dino Rage trying to get back in. Chemical Rage up to one second. Alchemist does not have the mana. Do you go back out? Do you go back in? Do you go back out? Do you go back in? Are the refresh? Fighting on. We're gonna see the 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 barracks fall, and I'm sure that UIC just let out a fantastic cheer from where they're playing this game. This Double game's count. not over. They're repelling under. SBU pushing him back. Ursa does manage to find Ember Spirit, turning on Shu, gets glimmered. Ursa once again in trouble. Do I go out? Do I go in? It's finally looks like he's gonna go out. Well, they get Megas, they're getting the tier four as well. And uh Can they actually push this? I I I don't know if SBU can actually push down the lanes right now. We'll see what they can do. They have to defend against Megas. PL immediately buys boots of travel. They need something to deal with Mega Creeps. They actually don't have a really good way of doing it. Like, PL has illusion and stuff, but he's all single target damage. He needs, like, a Mjolnir. I just heard a BKB get cast. That was an accident by Doom, for sure. Yeah. So, that's unfortunate. Um, I think SBU's just stuck in their base. I don't know if they can actually get out of here. Yeah, it's... They need Ember to be up first, and it's 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 unfortunate that Ember died, or else that's then they would have tried to make a move. Yeah. I mean, three buybacks not available for the side of uh, Illinois, but four buybacks down for the side of SBU. Three of them coming up soon, though. PL is going for Butterfly, which is going to replace Diffusal. No, you can't really get to the Diffusal, can you? He's just going to swap it out with Boots of Travel, I guess. Back and forth. Speaking of item decisions, Alchemist is pretty much done. Yeah, he's got another Ag queued up. Which, give everyone I mean, eggs, give everyone he gave one charge. to himself, so just give himself like more stats. He's got a yeah. Moonshard on himself. Does he have a Moonshard on anyone else? Uh, so he just put a moon shard on himself and an axe on himself. Yeah. PL doing a good job staying on top of net worth, excluding the alchemist who's expected to be there. I really like Venomancer going Octarine. Reduces the cooldown on sheep, but also uh, gives him a lot of spell steal in these fights because he is getting great ultimates off. Unfortunately, uh, um, not level 25. Um, on the Veno. Yeah. yeah. Two heroes for each team. Next will be Pugna, actually. That's no Zom Dota. I don't feel like either of his level 25 talents are that good for them right now, though. I mean, you definitely go the Mana Ward, I think. Like, or the Nether Ward. Like, you just put that down for fights, and Venomancer actually will kill himself. It's. He'll do so much damage to himself, but. I almost feel like you, you go the nether blast damage. Just to try and, in case you can push somehow? Uh, yeah, and, and, oh. and just, uh, it's there's only one fight left. If they kill your ward, your talent's wasted. Yeah, maybe. You're probably right. I think... Gosh, I don't know. I feel like nether ward does so much damage in fights, but I think if they want it any chance of trying to go high ground and, and end the game, like, just go straight throne, they will need the nether blast damage. We'll see what he does in just a moment. Very close. Who's next? Venomancer and Pugna will be the next. 
looks like. Thinner Master's 25, very valuable. Uh, I think UIC might even Dyer's be waiting for Roshan. Probably. We got Rosh timer down for two and a half more. Three? Almost three minutes. Did they actually wait for Rosh? I can't imagine oh they do. They don't have item slots even. Oh, I guess they do for her, so they can still give him Aegis. Alchemist is TPs. Pugna gets 25. Let's see what he does here. Gets another boss damage. Another you are blast. correct, sir. I feel bad for Doom. Like His 3% Inferno Blade is pretty decent, but I feel like he's getting controlled in these fights so much. Yeah. Is so funny. Yeah, that talent's so bad, actually. That's just, it's so weird for him. Just giving him cleave like that? Yeah, well, because the cleave normally is for farming. Yeah, but oh, you can get it at level 25. Congratulations. Exactly. Maybe you get There's... it this game to wave clear. <laughs> like, I actually don't know. Right? Uh, you it's can't. So you strange. actually have like, to. That doesn't even win you the game. No. Like, when are you ever like, oh, good thing Doom cleaved that guy? for the game win. <laughs> Undying gets you no know, the decay cooldown and then he wants he wants Alchemist to give him an axe. No, he goes reincarnation for sure. Re yeah, they're both really good. If you have bags, you think you definitely go decay, but he's not even close. He's, he yeah. He needs reincarnation just to try and not have to expend buyback or at least yeah. have three lives, which means three tombstones, but mm -hmm. the tombstones are dying so fast, you know? Yeah. Shu just slapping a catapult in the mid lane. Oh, he wants that CS so bad. I'm gonna steal it. UIC is waiting for Roshan. Yeah. Being in Roshan. Okay. BK uses BKB at Shrine. Very worried for his safety there, I'm sure. Now they're definitely not pushing. Uh, they're getting... Okay, Hyperstone completed for Ursa as well. Who's the next Hyperstone? I'm assuming Venno. I don't know who else you would put it on. He gets an Octarine. All right, they are 27,000 gold ahead. Roshan couldn't, can respond in 33 seconds. Alk's buyback, by the way, is almost 5,000 gold. Gosh. Well, he farms it up real quick. Well, it's like his buyback itself is 3,500, but he has so much unreliable gold that it, like, he has to actually have 5,000 gold in his bank mm -hmm. to not... Yeah. to not lose it. Elder Titan's 25 talents are amazing, but I think because he has Agonims, you go or Splitter cooldown. Arcane foul. God, 600 Echo Stomp damage. That is insanity. Is. 75 or Splitter cooldown is definitely in the way. 25 second cooldown. That's incredible. That's yeah. so good. You definitely yeah. go that. These fights are lasting like 30 seconds to a minute almost, so. Can't imagine you can go anything else. Uh, wake damage is definitely not bad. Yeah, it's but definitely it's not. not. It's not a huge amount of damage though at this point in the game. Yeah, I don't um, think you're looking at Elder Titan for your damage. He's just staring there at the high ground like, please, someone, kill these. And it's going to take them two years with these wards. <laughs> Only Venomancer. Got it. It is. All right, well... This is entertaining. He's not gonna get it. <laughs> PL? No, he can't get it. Roshan, 30 seconds. Still waiting. Mjolnir is queued up on Alchemist. Is there. Ah. Uh, I mean, why not? What, like, what other damage items are you gonna get? Did you put the... Oh, that's what his Hyperstone's for. He's not buying another one. I expected it to be a, a Moon Shard for Venomancer. But yeah, I guess, why not just go Mjolnir? What do you replace? Radiance at that point? Uh, yeah. I guess. 
I mean, Radiance, like, only helps him farm, and you don't need to farm. All ten heroes on the map with buyback. Yep. Roshan being assaulted now. Man, Roshan's had a rough game himself. He's just trying to enjoy, you know, some comfortable living in his quarters. And yeah. a UIC repeatedly coming over to steal it. Steal all of his, you know, steal all of his fun. I'm still surprised that there hasn't been a refresher shard on Elder Titan. Yeah. Because it's not refreshing BKB, which I think would be the only thing higher priority. And the refresher shard on Venno is pretty good. Uh, well, and Grimstroke now actually. Now on Grimstroke. Okay, they the just left a cheese there. Alright. Is that Roche number four, right? Second refresher. So, four bounty runes again going for the side of Illinois. That's each bounty rune, by the way, there is 560 gold for Alchemist. But he just got a casual two grand. Oh, yeah. 34k lead. Mega creeps. All right. University of Illinois is finally ready in this game. Ember Spirit has no buyback, but uh, that's because he has a Divine Rapier. Okay. And Initiation on... Uh... Benno taking damage. There is the Earth Splitter Tombstone. Alchemist trying to finish it up. PL actually got caught, but Doom is the target that we're going to see UAC go on. We get a great concoction. It looks like it is a full duration stun. Uh, Spirit, or uh, Elder Titan, stomped his dodge by the doppelganger in the back. PL is oh unable God, to finish him off for now, taking a lot of damage. The heck? Er a pig. Cox, you're gonna come out to follow. Dark Raider here with the Divine Rapier. Pugna has been silenced up. Concoction, he's gonna fall. Everyone on UIC is still standing with buybacks. Everyone on SBU is still standing as well. Okay, they heal up. Buybacks are used. UIC might just reset. Yeah, three buybacks are down. They just want to heal on uh, on Elder Titan and then come right back. I don't think there's anything they're waiting for. Oh my gosh. PK blinked himself into a tree and is stuck. PK. Alright, they shrine here, right? They just shrine and go. I'm assuming that's the plan okay. here. Okay. In case y'all are wondering, team bonding exercises using the showers. Oh. That's why UIC is doing so well, in case you were wondering. There's Grimstroke, Ink Swell Radius. Dude, that ability is so that good. That can win a game. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens here. Level 25 is pretty much picked up on everyone. Uh, actually, is it everyone? Everyone except Elder Titan and Undying. Smoke up here. They want to find a kill, but will they? Here you go, the Plague Ward health, by the way, on Venomancer, as expected. Tier 1 tower is now on command. Smoke. There are, oh, here we go. Gets the PL, Abyssal Blade. Doom War Stomp, Soulbind, Double Concoction. Here's the Earth Splitter as well. Great initiation from UIC. First Undying Falls, no buyback. Next is Doom, no buyback. Five still up. Elder Titan just goes straight. The boy the is just shit. clicking the throne. Uh-huh, Dark Raider's the dangerous one. He's the one with the uh, Divine Rapier, but he's getting pressured by the boy. He's just hitting the Ancient this whole time. UIC is then going to drop Pugna. Only two players remain. Ricky, soon to only be one. Oh, Elder Titan does die. Venomancer's coming back in. Fortification finally used. Surrounded by creeps. The Ancient's in trouble, but Alchemist dies with buyback. Gonna try and get back into this fight right away on the bottom. He is gonna go for Ancients or Heroes? He's going for Ancient. He's chopping, he's chopping, he's chopping, he's chopping, he's chopping, he's chopping. He is going to land, Ricky. They get it. Game over, finally. 63 minutes. University of Illinois actually take down Oh my gosh, Sony Brook. I'm not sure if you noticed, did you see that uh, aggressive GG call there from Sammy? Did he really? He actually, like, his Alex just clicking the base, just fucking wailing <laughs> on it. My bad, I didn't, mean, I didn't say that word. Just wailing on the base, and uh, Sammy just calls it GG, like, aggressively. Yeah, it's pretty he's, funny. Going, he's going to LAN right now. So I mean, you know we'll UIC is, like, jumping up and down after that game. They, they just confirmed sure. a LAN spot. They're popping their, their microphones, their oh, headphones, man. everyone's screaming in their mic. Well, Ricky, uh, who are these guys again? University of Illinois, Chicago.
They just took out SBU 2-0. We will be seeing them in Atlantic City on land for a chance to take home the Grand Championship after a fantastic series. And that's... Uh, they're going to be facing... Um, the winners, RIT. Uh, yeah, RIT in the winner bracket finals, I believe, on land. Yep. So that's going to be a, an amazing series. RIT did lose to Stony Brook, but uh, I, I, you know, it's both they those also teams. Beat are, Stony Brook, yeah, they're they have. So it's going to be an amazing series. I can't wait to watch that. Um, I'm exhausted from those two super long, super exciting games. So before we take off, Carlo, where can these people find you? Because that's what they're all here for. Follow me on Snapchat, C-A-R-L-O-L-T-Z-O-N. <laughs> but more importantly, Ricky, where can they find you? Y'all can find me on TikTok at our cryptic, R-K-R-Y-P-T-I-C. Please give us a follow. Uh, we do what we can. We uh, like to cast a lot of Dota, but we'll be here again on Monday next week with some more Dota action, I believe. Um, so we'll see you I all might then. I not be there, actually. Huh? I think, actually, no, I think I will be there. Okay, well... Yeah, we'll we'll see. find out. I, Stay we'll tuned. See if it's, if uh, maybe I'm doing something else, like laying in my bed, playing on my phone. We'll yeah, see. I've, I've been there. I've been there. Congratulations, night, everybody. Stony Brook Universe. Oh, or, um, congratulations, whoops, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, Stony Brook. On congratulations, Stony Brook, on your lower bracket appearance. Uh, University of Illinois advanced to semifinals. And thank you to uh, Collegiate Star League, the best place for collegiate anything. We're out, man. We're tired. We're calling it. Peace. Have a good night, everyone.